situations and uh, heat pump follow-up inspections and just different things that relate to, to energy. Uh, if you call the utility, call volunteer, you're likely to get a call from me after that if you call about something energy related. So I'll start with that and then Bob, would you introduce yourself? I'm Bob, a student of energy. Bob Michelis? Correct. Almost Michelin. If he had one letter different than last, his, his last name, he wouldn't be here right now. He's Bob Mitchell. And he has been for a lot of years. My mm -hmm. name is R.J. Martinez. I'm also a student um, willing to learn more. And, so and you've, been, you've been to other seminars here, so you, you're, yes. you're definitely interested in this subject. So there are four Actually, family members in school here? Right. Golly. Myself and my three oldest children. Okay, and you are on the Cleveland State Christmas card list, is that right? I hope so. You better be, haven't you? <laughs> and and uh, what prompted you to come tonight, Shannon? I saw it in the student planner, and I just thought it would be interesting. Great, great. Hopefully it will be. You'll have a lot of fun. Now, is, is, is this your sister this with you? This is my daughter, Julia, my oldest child. You're Julia also Blackwell. a student? Your student also? Enjoying school so far? How, how is it going to school with mom? Now that's just, that's totally different. Right? <laughs> it's yeah. not really. It's just not. It's I mean, I, I, as long as she buys lunch, it works well. <laughs> she usually buys me lunch. <laughs> when I was in college, my parents were not only going to school with me, they also weren't in the same town. Yeah. So, you know, it was, it was not, not, not quite the same. So, so we have one class together. Oh, you have a class together? Oh, we do. We take yeah. a chamber choir together. Oh, good. So we don't have to worry about you like copying off each other or anything. Yeah. Chamber choir. Okay. She would copy off of me and then you know. That's right. That's right. Mom knows all, That's right? Good yeah. <laughs> good deal. Glad you're here. I move over to our volunteer energy contingent. I'm Paige Bunnell. I do uh, energy services at VEC. And I'm Christy Kelly. I'm uh, the member services specialist there, and I do the heat pump loan program, new home program, water heater rebates. We work for Volunteer Energy. And energy services, anything related to energy, we'll, use, we'll come here and usually we'll go somewhere else after that to, yeah, to be I've handled. Done, I've done seminars with Volunteer before. You've done seminars with Volunteer before, you sure have. Did you know that? We were, before she had that. We were in Crossville at one time, yeah. if you remember, that's also Volunteer Energy covers basically from Georgia to Kentucky, a big stripe across Kentucky. I've done, I've done seminars in every state except North Dakota. Guess why I haven't gone there? They're not inviting me to come. <laughs> <laughs> I, keep, I keep telling them, I was telling Kansas here the other day and all around thinking, that word's gonna get around someday. They're gonna say, let's have Doug come to North Dakota. And then I can say, got them all, got them all. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, that's good. And Michelle, you want to get closer, I think. You want to introduce Yeah, she did. Yeah, right You'll come down here. Come on down here. I won't have to, because I'm not going to use sound system with, with this. Yeah, come on down here. We'll, just, we'll, we'll, we'll keep this one informal. We'll keep it informal, but we'll have fun. I, I need to talk to one of you time. after the seminar. Okay. Michelle really is the reason you're here. I'll just go introduce you since we're all, we're all family okay. now. Okay. And uh, because there is a grant from the Appalachian Regional Commission, and it was energy related, and it allowed the school to do several things to help with energy, energy education. And one of those is to bring in subject matter experts, people that could talk more about energy, energy related items. And we're fortunate tonight to have probably one of the best, if not the best known and well recognized energy expert in the country. And this is Doug Rye, Doug R-Y-E, Doug Rye. And Doug is a, a licensed architect. Doug has been doing this for many years. We won't probably say how many, but most Abraham of your life. Abraham Lincoln taught me most of this. <laughs> you learned it all from Abe Lincoln and then picked up a few other pointers along the way. Uh, Doug is uh, a featured writer for many of the electric co-ops in other states. Also a well-known speaker. He does over 150 seminars a year about energy, energy efficiency, energy related matters. Doug also has a nationally syndicated, nationally syndicated radio station, a radio program, and it will be broadcast from Cleveland State tomorrow. 
So Doug is doing his program, Home Remedies, from the campus. It will be here in this building. And uh, Doug is on, uh, I don't know how many, 50 or 60 stations now? Something like that. Uh, I think 17 states. I think you said even a foreign country. Which, which one? Alabama. Alabama. Okay, <laughs> good, yeah. good. So uh, we, we, here, it used to be on 102.3 in Chattanooga. It's not there anymore. Now there's an AM station that is, uh, it's not in Cleveland, and I'll, I'll, I'll get the call letters for you. We'll can you pick it up over the computer? Yes. It, oh. is, it is streamed. Yeah, yeah you can, you can uh, uh, for, for, for it, uh, the station that it originates, which has ever since the beginning of time, okay, basically, is 1037 The Buzz. Okay. 1037 The Buzz. Now, that is total sports and such for the whole week. It's 100,000 watt stations changed several times. Sometimes on Saturday morning, they simply, the people that left on, on Friday didn't leave the system turned on and were not allowed to go in that room, okay? So sometimes on Saturday mornings you can't get it, but most most of the time you can. Mm -hmm. 1037 The Buzz. Yeah. So you got that, Bob? You can tune in yeah. tomorrow? Yeah. Or you can come <coughs> here. What time tomorrow they're having a 10 o'clock. be 10 o'clock your turn, your time. 10 o'clock till 11 o'clock, yeah. one hour. Yeah. You want to come? I think it's in room 117. One, one, one I'm sorry. So go around and through and come back to room 117. <laughs> so without any more ado, because I know everyone wants to hear you and oh, yeah, not, not me, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I want to introduce the Walter Matthau of radio, the king of talk and talk, and everybody's best friend, Doug Rock. Yeah, thank you. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, I have looked forward to this, really. Really, I have, okay? And, and uh, over the last two years, I've done more presentations to schools, high schools and colleges, than of all the other years that I've been doing this put together. I mean, it's just happened that way, and. And I, I love to do it in colleges and schools. And, and one reason, yeah, I'm, I'm crazy guy. You'll figure that out real soon. I'm really crazy. But also, I'm a very soft-hearted, appreciative, and some things. Three teachers, basically, and let's say before I went to church, I'm a pastor, okay, I have some there. But three teachers, and some of you could relate to this, pretty much shaped my life. You, can you think back of the one or two or three or four teachers that you had that have just been special in your life. And uh, and uh, I don't know, I, I was telling someone this earlier today, I don't know what I'd be doing, I don't know what the situation would be in any way if it hadn't been for those three teachers. And uh, one of those was a college biology teacher, and I took biology in college because I had to take biology in college. I dreaded every second of it. And this lady come along, I guess, and figured me out or something, okay? And uh, part of her personality, I got, okay, I'm telling you, that that's how it was. She made biology so interesting to me, you know, and then I was thinking, well, maybe I should have majored in biology or something. But uh, actually, I majored in architecture, uh, went to the University of Arkansas in 1960, that gave you some idea, played in the band, music is a big part of my life, a real big part of my life. In fact, what, what, the way I'll get back home tomorrow, hopefully, in less than nine hours from here when the radio show's over, I'll have enough gospel music CDs in there to sing all the way back. The danger part is when I get to the real good ones, and I, I, I sing a lot too, when I get to a, a lot of these good ones, they're real good, I'll look down, I'll be doing like 93 to 95 mile an hour in my car. I mean, I have to, and when that happens, I have to go back and put those speed control at 70 or 75, and it seems like you're poking then, of course, okay? And then another uh, professor, teacher actually, that had a real influence on my life was the, the band director that I had for many, many years. And I didn't have a father, couldn't find the father in all those years. And he was kind of my father figure, so that was important to me. And then the other one was a fella who uh, in junior high, this, we had junior highs in, they were called, ninth grade, and I took a drafting class. Okay, the first part of the semester, you got a little bit of of metal work, a little bit of woodworking, a little bit of old, old time printing back then where you, you know, was trying to teach you something to do and where you actually set print and run papers and that kind of stuff, which got obsolete really, really fast, of course. 
and the other one was a drafting class. And, and that drafting class and I got along just really good, just really good for whatever reason, for whatever reason. And uh, I had a crippled arm even then, so there's some things I'd like to have done that I couldn't really do, but I could do that drafting. And, and, uh, and, and I remember I entered a contest, you ready for this? This is big, you ready for this? I want a $15 compass. I want a blue ribbon, and I even beat out some of the 10th, 11th, 12th graders on my work, on my drawing. And I'm still thinking, you know, well, I, I think I can do this. I think I can do this. Make a long story short is, so I then signed up for drafting classes for the 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. And uh, when I was a junior, when I was a junior in uh, 11th grade, 11th grade, why the teacher, they had a teacher's appreciation day and a student appreciation day or something like that. And Mr. Frank Cassidy allowed me to teach all the drafting classes for one full day. And I was younger than a lot of those that I was doing. And, and, and it wasn't, wasn't difficult for me. I mean, you don't teach drafting in one day, but I tried to help students in there, okay? And things like that. So John, I'm telling part of this because you've never heard this, okay? Okay. You, okay. So, so uh, I did that and it went good. And he said, uh, this is something y'all may not laugh at or think is funny, but it's hilarious to me now. And uh, I was a naive little boy that just didn't know much about the world, okay? And uh, when I was in 11th grade, why, he said, we're taking a bus to the University of Arkansas this coming uh, Friday night and there's an architect going to be speaking up there. He said, I know that most of you, probably none of you in these class, this class will be an architect, but one of you might, and that's part of my responsibility is to let you know about all this. So I'm the only junior that he invited to go on that trip to Federal Arkansas. Are you ready for this now? This old man, about like my age now, this old man was the speaker. He looked terrible. He had long hair, and he, of course, half my friends were hippies, by the way, okay? But, I mean, he, he just, he looked terrible, and he gave a long speech, and everybody applauded and was happy, and all this thing and stuff happened, and, uh, and I'm thinking, man, I'll be glad we got home. Well, afterwards, while we went up and shook his hand, and, uh, and I got our picture taken. You ready now? Two years later, I learned that this was Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, they introduced him, Frank. I didn't know who Frank Lloyd Wright was. I mean, he didn't live in a slum area of Fort Worth, Arkansas. I didn't know him, you know. <laughs> and, you know, say, so, okay, that's just something I've never told very many places, actually. I'm waiting for that to work, okay, which we're having trouble with, it looks like. Well, I used to introduce you, Doug, as a cross between Jerry Clower and Frank Lloyd Wright. And Will yeah. Rogers. Of course, y'all don't know Will Rogers. When I go to Oklahoma, then people don't very just go, I wear a different outfit. Mm -hmm. But I can pull my hair over like this a little bit. Chew that gum, and I, I can do Will Rogers almost to his whole Will Rogers Follies thing. I've watched it so many times. Uh, we're not we're not having any luck here. So but, okay. So with, with all this said, with all this said, so for for all these years now, uh, well, I'll go ahead and tell part of this if we get this going up here. I won't show those parts. Okay. Uh, uh, I went I went off to college then and uh, got my degree in architecture. I went out in private practice in Oklahoma for about a year. And then I got a chance to go back in Arkansas where my sweetheart was. And I uh, was in Arca ended up in an architect's office there for about a year in Jonesboro, Arkansas. I went from Tulsa back to Jonesboro. And then I got a call from uh, Little Rock, Arkansas that says, we're looking for a young architect to work for this federal agency. It was called Farmers Home Administration. It's really the, the other FHA. And they said, we're getting ready to start loaning millions of dollars provide housing to low and moderate income families and senior citizens. And I remember the, him saying this, we're going to try to help a lot of people. That hit me just right. It hit me just right. So I was the last, the last employee hired by the federal government when Richard Nixon put the freeze on hiring. I was the last one. And that, that's history too. Mr. Rock. If you don't mind, and yes, we're going to move right across the hall where I was able to get us up and going with your PowerPoint. Okay. Can we do that? Okay. We might everybody grab something that's not heavy and we'll just take it over. We'll get that. I'll we'll get that. that I'll it's a lot of experience. Plus, I love to help people, too. That's what I do. So give them just a second to come back.
like the governor said when he made his speech at the prison. Good to have all y'all here. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell that one tonight and say the governor was supposed to be here last night. He and he kind of did show up. I'll pick up the morning going. <laughs> Oh, he's filming me. I better be careful tonight. <laughs> Slow down, or uh, if you have a question, uh, ask it. Don't be afraid to, and I'll answer it fast as I can. And we'll try to not stay past eleven thirty tonight. Okay? <laughs> Y'all laugh at that till the night. We started at six and finished at ten thirty. Nobody would leave. Nobody would leave. And I was worn out. My gosh, I was worn out. Okay, let's see. Okay, don't let me down now. Chee -chee. Let me down now. It works on every machine everywhere. Yeah, so far. Yeah, so far. That doesn't have a hook at those other lines. You want to do it from there for now? So it's just that one perfect angle. How'd you do that, Keith? I went to the keyboard. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my lovely assistant, Mr. John Prophet. Yes, thank you very much. Thank Call you. me Vanna. <laughs> get, your, get your chair too. Okay. Yeah, that is me. That is me, the king of Conk and Talk. And there's stories behind everything that's up here, like with how much a company paid. It was a power company. Uh, how much they paid for me to do a photo shoot like dressed up like this. They didn't tell me what it was going to be. All right. And it, but I got a gold caulk gun. I am the king of caulk and talk. Okay, John, we'll, we'll move right along. Okay, move on. What's that say? Bird in the bush. A bird in the bush, right? No, it did. A bird in the, the, the bush, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Now, the reason I show that, and usually it goes over real well, is because we as adults, and you are younger, most of you are younger <coughs> than like my last audience was, okay? When I do it in high school. Adults are hard to teach. That's not true. Adults are hard to change because we think we already know everything. And I can tell you for a fact, there was a time when I thought I knew everything about this and this is going to be a piece of cake to do everything. And what I learned was that most of the stuff that I had been taught in college and all about energy efficiency, which wasn't a whole lot, simply I can prove now was not true. You know, things like a house needs to breathe. Y'all understand, John, how many years we went in America thinking a house needs to breathe, and now everybody that knows anything about energy says, and I always say, there's no such thing as house breathing. House doesn't have lungs, it can't breathe. Okay, and in Illinois recently, while well, this the elderly gentleman, older fella, who is a builder, he said, Mr. Rye, I, I love you, I hear you all the time. But he said, a house needs to breathe. And I said, it can't breathe, it doesn't have lungs. What do you mean breathe? And he said, it has to, air has to go in and out. And I said, you mean the house has to leak? Now, doesn't this sound totally different all of a sudden? A house breathes sounds because they write it up, popper mechanics and all this stuff, healthy air and all this kind of stuff, okay? And then all of a sudden you say leak and you want your house to leak? Why no? Okay? So so that's how this all was and, and it's just all these things. So what it really says is a bird in the deep bush. So what I ask you to do for the next hour, okay? Open your mind totally. Raise your hand. Open, say, tell me you'll do it. The cameraman too. Raise your hand, all right. <laughs> open, open your mind totally because I guarantee you everybody in the room, including John Prophet, every time he hears things like this, he learns something else or a better way to prove this is true or see it or these type of things on these things. And you'll be amazed what, what I've learned through the years and what you can learn maybe in a real short period, real short period of time. I was a little younger then, okay? Mm -hmm. But I've been doing that radio show, okay? Licensed architect, I am a licensed architect. I do 150 seminars a year and have for many years. It's just unbelievable to me, okay? The radio show is now in our 22nd year. 22 years I've done this every Saturday morning and only missed it five times. That's when my wife says, we are going somewhere on our 40th anniversary. <laughs> and I said, well, I got radio. And she says, we are going somewhere special. And I said, I can't give you but six days. Well, I gave her three weeks in in Europe, okay? Had a great, great trip, learned a lot of things. You've been over there some, okay? And some things they're ahead of us on over there on energy. And so we had such a great, marvelous trip. I've already planned our 50th anniversary trip. You're supposed to say where. Where? Where? I'm going to go back and get her. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> That's better when a hundred's in the room. <laughs> you know? Okay, all right. 23 years with a federal employee. As a federal employee, as a state architect, I was the second architect ever hired by FHA, and I was the youngest one ever hired up until then uh, by the government. And as simple as this, I learned some of these things, and the government told me I couldn't tell people what some of the things I'd learned. And I, I, there's, I can make that a long story, but that's really what happened. The government said, you can't do speeches and teach these things you've been talking about because there was two very, very large corporations who still dislike me to this day. And I, I actually learned that they were, and told people about it and proved that they were liars and, and so on and so on, okay? That's how it was. To the next one, okay? Okay, here we go. Say this with me. Energy items cost nothing. They make you money. Say that with me. Energy items cost nothing. They make you money. Every single thing, every single thing that I teach will cost you a little bit to do it, or it might cost quite a bit to do it, but every single thing I teach will make you money at real good returns on your investment. Every single thing I teach does have a payback. If you put $3,000 in, at some point you will get your $3,000 back in savings from not sending it to the electric company or the gas company or the propane company. You follow me? Okay. And one of my favorite things I tell people now, which goes right over most of the heads, is this. We was talking today about geothermal here. Uh, my experience in Tennessee, and one reason I was looking forward to come here is this. I'm trying to figure out why Tennessee is so far behind on geothermal heating and cooling. And I don't know, do you, do you know why? Do y'all do is much? It, is it the cost? Well, Which, that's what they blame it on, but, but like today, I've done 75,000 of them. Follow me? And I just came from Missouri, okay? And Southern Missouri is doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Arkansas, we do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And I cross over as soon as I get to Memphis, come across the Mississippi River and hit Kentucky. Kentucky is mandated. Kentucky mandates that all schools be retrofitted as they're retrofitted or all new schools have to be geothermal. Okay, and I and I and some of your schools, you got one right here, real close. I know it's geothermal. Just recently, I guess I don't know how old it is. Got okay, three now, huh? Got three. Got three. You ought to have three hundred at least. So if you know the answer, and the gentleman today, as we, as I was meeting people this morning here in this building, okay, just next door here, uh, we were talking about that, and and he said, well, I was going to go geothermal, but you can't do it because man, we got so much rock, and I thought. I'll enjoy this next 30 minutes, okay? Mm -hmm. And by the time we talk for 30 minutes, he's going like, well, I didn't know that. You know? And I'm going to tell you this, point blank, and I, I, uh, I was hoping to have enough people here at this meeting that some college somewhere is going to take this lead and run with it, I hope, okay? I know this is a big thing to say, an individual that doesn't work for the government, and I don't, I'm not governor and all this and that, but listen to me. I think I know the only answer to our energy problems in America. I believe I know what it is. And it's not anything you've ever heard before. And it's so simple to do, I don't think anybody will ever tell you this either. All right? It's convert all the buildings we can to geothermal heating and cooling and plant about 90 billion trees. Now that's how simple this is. And I challenge, I hope somebody, I hope people, somebody will start studying this and come back to me and either prove I'm wrong, which is fine if they do. Okay, it's fine if somebody proves me wrong. All right? Okay. Uh, but the truth is, I'm always right. <laughs> Except at home. All right. So, so uh, uh, that's the answer. Now, let's talk about that for just a moment. I don't, yes. The, the answer, the real answer to our nation's energy problems, and I'll tell you why, okay, is to convert all the buildings we possibly can to geothermal heating and cooling. Now listen, geothermal, you may or may not know this, geothermal as we use it really isn't geothermal. I'll show you some slides. Yellowstone Park is geothermal. We're really just taking heat pumps and connecting them to the ground and calling them geothermal. Okay? But a geothermal system is 75% solar. And it works 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, the same no matter if the sun is shining, no matter if the wind's blowing, no matter how cold it is, how hot it is. And look at me, look at me. It gives you heating and cooling for half the cost of any other thing there is. You got that in your mind? 
It gives you heating and cooling on a house or a commercial building or anything else, half the cost and half the energy usage of any other thing there is. And lasts twice as long. And I hate to say this sometimes, but the police is looking in here so, and the people can't even steal your copper because you don't have any outdoor equipment. I stood out here this afternoon. I, I sneak around a lot, John. Don't know and I do this. I do this all the time. When I'm going to talk somewhere, when I get a chance, I sneak around and look at a lot of stuff. And I look at this campus. And I know some really great things this campus has done through the years. I really do. I really, 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 really do, okay? But I go behind some of these buildings and look at all the heating and air equipment out there. My gosh. If, if, you, if you knew the real efficiency of that equipment, you'd call tomorrow and say, we need to change this mess out. You gotta have five maintenance men to keep the water towers going and they're loud, they're noisy, they're ugly, they're da 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 and I'm sitting there thinking, darn it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Dad burn it, you know. If we just yank all that stuff out of here and pop about twenty holes in the ground out here or build a lake and I'll show you how to do that and do ninety tons of cooling so easy, it's unbelievable. And your electric bill forever and ever and ever and ever and ever is gonna be half for heating and cooling, what it's going to be like you've got it now. You know, and I see this, that just, it burns in my heart. Okay, now, uh, and, and I'm doing this speech a little different from any I've done in a long time. Are you with me on this? I'll skip over a whole lot of things when I start showing them in a minute because I want to tie these together, all right? Let's talk environmentally. And I am, I am a tree hugger. What is a tree hugger? Pardon? Absolutely. You don't want to cut the tree down. Unless, unless you really need to. Now, I went just down the street twice today, right where the dead skunk is laying down here right now, that they <laughs> ran out of the woods last night. They just removed every tree down here on about 25 to 40 acres since I've been here two days. On the side of a hill, we get one inch rain tomorrow, you tell me what's going to happen. I can tell you what'll start happening. Okay? Our country gives no consideration to trees. It's in the way. I got a bulldozer that can get it out of there. You know where I'm talking about? Just down the street here? Okay? Pardon? It's an eyesore to me. What are they going to do? Is it going to be another housing subdivision? What's it going to be? I don't know what it's going to be. Okay? But listen, let's, let's talk environmental wise. I'm the kind that says, and I've actually, this is a true story on a college campus. Uh, old historic tree and on a community college in Oklahoma. And to make an addition to their building, uh, the, the town was really split on whether to move this tree or not. I mean, these grandpas and grandmas got engaged under that tree, and their grandkids are planting under that tree. You know what I'm trying to say? A, a really important tree. Okay? And they asked me, can you believe they're going to cut that tree? I said, yeah, I hate to see it, but let her go. They couldn't believe I said that because I'm a tree hunter, right? I said, here's all you got to do. Now let's go across the street over here on that lot over there where y'all already said it can't be anything but a park, and let's just go over and plant about 100 trees. You know, that's kind of, that's how I'm a tree hugger. I don't cut any unless they need to be cut. But here's my point. Here's my point. Let's talk about it. The environmentalists who are, who are against burning coal, what is their concern? Your turn. And some of us fit into some of this. I understand that, okay? What, what's the concern of the environmentalist about coal-fired energy? You, your turn. When I say your turn, you have Pollution. to talk. Your turn. What? Pollution. Pollution. Uh, which contains what, primarily, that the concern is? Smoke. The real concern is carbon dioxide. There's other things in it, too. That's the concern. And is the earth seemingly getting warmer? It seems so, to some extent, okay? As it happened before in history, everything would say it has. What's causing it to get hotter for this period or forever, whatever? I don't know that. I, I mean, I really don't. Okay? But whatever it is. Now, but the environmentalist says carbon dioxide. How many times here? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Okay? Ready? What do trees eat? Say it out loud. Carbon dioxide. What do trees produce? Oxygen. Do you know it takes it takes four mature trees to make enough oxygen for one person? 
So we just go in there and whack down, because why, why, we're over here in Tennessee, there's trees everywhere, right? <laughs> yeah, listen to me, I've kind of gone back, I don't know I'm perfectly right on this, but I've gone back and looked at history, and it appears to me that every continent or every nation that has ever cut all their trees for whatever reason are all deserts. Are all deserts. Are trees beautiful? Kind of everybody agrees that. Yeah, they're great, isn't it? Good for wildlife? Your turn. Why, well, yeah. Help cool the earth, yes or no? Yes. Uh, well, why'd you park your tree under there today, even if it wasn't that hot today? Everybody look for that shady spot out here, didn't they? First thing they do is run in, run out to right under that shade of that tree. You say, yeah. Yeah. So why don't we just plant trees and do what? And plant trees and do what? And plant trees and do what? And just keep planting trees, you know. You know, if I were younger, I'd, I'd be the Johnny Appleseed of this century. I'd be going across the country planting trees, okay? That's, but I think that's our answer. Now, let's go look. And this is what's important on the environmental side to me on, on like the geothermal. I, along with probably the utility companies, all of them that I know, don't want to build any more power plants. Can't afford to, can't get permits to do it anyway, okay? I mean, we, we'd like to stretch out the electricity that's available for a long period of time. So everybody talks about, well, let's do this and this and this and this and cut back on carbon emissions. Watch now. If I took this building right here and I could, I could do something to it where it would use half and as much electricity as it was using before, would that, in fact, also cut carbon emissions? Yeah, it would be exactly the same thing, of course, stay with me, it'd be exactly the same thing, as far as carbon emissions, as it would be as to go build solar or wind turbines to produce that electricity, which would also reduce the carbon emissions. You follow me? So that's how energy efficiency and all relate to all I do. And, and energy efficiency y'all is one of those things that uh, everybody wins. Everybody wins on energy efficiency. I don't know a single situation where somebody loses in, in this game here. It's a win, 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 win deal. Okay, so now you're the first group I've had to repeat it to me. In my opinion, what's the answer to our nation's energy problems? Your turn. Geothermal plant trees. It's that simple. It's that simple. Now, I saw you take that as a no, and I hope that you get that and, and, and at your next coffee break or something, somebody's got to move so the lights will come on. <laughs> yeah, there we go, thank you. That's right. Okay. I knew what happened. I knew what happened when it did it, okay? All right, so, and, and here's the deal. Everybody, now I'm jumping a little ahead here about on, on over to geothermal, okay, but listen. Everybody in America is going to buy that owns a house or a business is going to buy geothermal, including this college. So why don't you just go ahead and put it in your house? Now, now that's that's a little that takes you a little while to think about that, okay? But let's say who owns a house or lives in a house, not an apartment, in a house, right? Okay. Uh, let's suppose that your heating and air system in your house is what age? Got retrofitted because the air conditioner blew out last year. So we had to upgrade our system. Wish you'd talk to me first. What age? <laughs> what age you have? Uh, six years. So you're heating and air six years old? Yeah, okay. Well, how many are yours? Which age you're heating and air? Two. Two? Mine's uh, probably over ten. Over ten. Most likely in about two years or something like that, your system's going to start acting up and cost oh, you some money. It's already acting yeah. up. We don't own our home. But, but okay. it acts up let's suppose it's yours. Years let's suppose it's yours so. for now, okay? It's yours. And you're going to have to buy a new system anyway. Okay? So it's going to cost you X number of dollars to get a decent system. And you want John and them to check your house before you do it so we can fix your duct work and da 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 da. Okay? Let's take the money over that's going to cost to have a new system and put it in a hat over here. Okay? Now, there's also a 30% tax credit for geothermal in your house. 30% of the entire cost to retrofit your house to geothermal can come off the bottom line of your income tax. If you're a taxpayer, okay, the government will allow you to take 30% of the entire cost of the retrofit. I'm talking about the entire cost 
right off the bottom line of your income tax. So that may be that may be nine, twelve thousand dollars or something right there. So let's take that and put it in the hat. Clunk clunk. Got it? Now some states have big rebates. You all have rebates for geothermal? Okay. Okay, if you don't, that's okay. We don't in Arkansas either. I just came from Missouri and they have seven hundred and fifty dollar a ton rebate. So all of a sudden there I got three thousand more dollars more to stick in the hat. You follow me? But we don't have it in Arkansas either. Now, so the payback on your house on geothermal might be five years, might be six years, might be seven. So let's just say worst case seven, okay? <clears throat> In seven years, what does payback mean on energy efficiency? Yeah, you do. You get paid back. You get paid back. In seven years, let's say it costs you $6,000 more to do it. it Payback in seven years will mean in seven years you will have saved six thousand dollars on utility bills. Okay, so in six years you got your money back, and after that you make money every month for the rest of your life and don't have to buy it anymore in your life because you did something real smart as an investment. Great, great investment. Okay, if your payback on the years is six years and you don't do it, what happens six years from now? You got to have another new one. No, no. In six years, you will send enough money to Volunteer Electric to pay for it anyway, and you still don't have it. Right. Follow that? Yes. You're going to buy it anyway. You're going to buy it anyway. Now, I wish your system was 10, 12, 13 years old, because when you got a system, it, pardon? <laughs> it was a Fort Bragg. Yeah, see? Why didn't somebody tell you this? See, that's what's bothering me about Tennessee. Yeah, we got desperate and had to, we were out of town, so we had to get a friend of ours to actually help us get contractors out there and have the air conditioning. But you hadn't heard okay. me, but you hadn't heard me story. No, either. I hadn't heard you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, during the heat pump loan program, I've, I've noticed there's a few more just of your normal contractors are getting into installing the geothermals, which is good. It helps. It is good. It's also it dangerous. <laughs> kind of scary because you're thinking there's one out in north georgia that that's what they do yeah. engineering services they yeah. are geothermal right. but all the others are just kind of getting into it they just dibble dabble on that and, and they're going to mess them up and you, you know you, but there are i guess more, it's becoming more available to more customers or making the third percent tax aware. credit and where people hear about it <clears throat> terrible to say this this way but where i'm on the radio people want it and know about it and there's some exceptions to this, I know there are, but where I'm not, most people don't know it. And your heating and air people don't want you to know it. I can tell you that point blank, because they, they don't do it, don't have it for sale. They should, they'll tell you bad stories about it if they have to, to keep you from using it. Well, I've heard one talk about how he could put in like an 18-seater, maybe it was or something. Oh, I heard it a million times. And, and it would know, be just as efficient. <laughs> <laughs> we broke it. <laughs> yeah. But I guess the the end of that story is that you know once you get your payback on the geothermal, it's going to continue to. Let pay me tell you something. See, I'm going to tell you something you don't even know. I don't even know if John knows this or not. Okay, it's a Sear 18. I said, right? Oh, I got one that's just about as good as geothermal. See, I always say, how much free hot water does it make? Well, now it don't give you no free hot water. <laughs> like, see, what geothermal give you over half your hot water for free. Got that? They never tell you that. They probably don't even know that, okay? And besides that, here's what you don't know. That SEER, that SEER high efficiency, SEER 18 or whatever it is, first of all, is only in the low speed. So if it's a two-speed, if it's a five-ton two-speed unit, it's SEER 18 only in the two-and-a-half-ton range. When it's running, when it's not hot or cold, it's when it's that great. Are you with me on that? So, so when it jumps up to all five tons on, it's probably no better than about a, about a 13. You, you just, they just don't tell you. And besides that, it's SEER rating. Do you agree with that? What does SEER stand for? So can you, can you tell me? Who knows what SEER rating means on an air conditioner? I forget what the S, but it's seasonal. Seasonal energy efficiency rating. You got it. Write it down, y'all. <laughs> seasonal energy efficient rating or ratio. It's the same thing, okay? What's the S stand for? Seasonal. Ask me what the SEER rating is on geothermal. They don't have one. Don't have one? <laughs> really? <laughs> How come? I don't know. 
<laughs> because because geothermal's in the ground, it doesn't know it gets hot outside, cold outside, the wind's blowing, if it's not, if the sun's shining, don't know, don't care, it's the same thing here as a cave your whole life. It can be snowing outside, minus 20 degrees, and we do them, and we do lots of them in Canada. People say, you can't do this in Canada. Oh, yeah, we can. Oh, yeah. Here. You follow that? So we ain't got no season. You said Say, well, what will what would move this market to? Uh, there's only one thing that will move the market, in my opinion, that you consume. And see, I don't personally think that the government ought to give us 30% off our taxes to do it. We were doing it way before we had any money for the government to do it. You just calculate it out and say, my payback's nine years, and these systems are going to last 25 years, and if I can do it, I'd be a fool not to do it. And once a 30% tax credit came into that, it's a no-brainer, y'all. And that's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'm always honest with you whether you like it or not, okay? I don't know why Tennessee is so far behind on this. There, there's something there's something there that I just don't know, and I, and I can't figure it out. It has to do with their football team, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I ain't called on you yet, don't you? <laughs> Don't start that football. The mess the Razorbacks are in right now, I don't even want to think about it, okay? I don't even want to think, put that on film too in the bed, okay? Yeah, anyway. Okay, yeah, so. Is there a geothermal company the, the, the answer is there are several in Tennessee, several. But it's way, 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 way less than, it won't even be close to 1% of all the heating there are people. There's little, uh, this is also true now, now in, in uh, Missouri, you can find a geothermal person almost anywhere in the state that's got experience too. In Arkansas, uh, I can get it for you, just, uh, who, who at, did you ask me about the church yeah. today? We went by the church over there today and he talked about it and he said that their electric bill is $24,000 a month in that church of God. And it's new, right? Pretty new. Yeah. Which, which, church, which church was it? North Cleveland Church. It's a big old church. So why didn't the why didn't the architect? <laughs> I'd almost bet, and I don't mean anything negative of this. I really don't. I'd almost bet the schools that you've got geothermal in, somebody forced them. I bet the school, maybe they did. I hope the school, somebody on the school board just says, hey, we don't need to be stupid about this. Only, is that the junior high that has a solar on it? Uh, no, that's Cleveland High School. Cleveland High School. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice deal on everything. Right, everybody agree? And, and please don't understand, I'm not against solar, but I'll tell you the absolute truth about solar. And I've done a thousand solar systems in my life. Okay, all right. But uh, uh, do, do you, does anybody in the room happen to know who paid for the solar on that school? And I don't. Does anybody happen to know? Was it in the bond issue, or does anybody know? Now here's why I'm asking. Unless the government or somebody or the county or someone paid for most of that, it'd have been a hundred times better taking that and put it right on geothermal on that school. Hundred times better. Okay. And I'm not against it. I think it's great that your school here does some of this, test it, whatever. But the people that test it here are going to tell you the same thing I do. It don't generate much. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a fact. That's just, I don't, I don't make that up. That's just how it is. In fact, I've learned this. Y'all may not know this in Tennessee. The sun never shines at night. Did y'all know that already? Or cloudy days. Y'all sometimes have cloudy days. Really? You follow me? And I'm going to show you some of that. I am not against solar. I think it's going to be neat, neat, neat if somebody, if somebody someday figures out a way to do it. But it's not there yet. And I don't know anybody that thinks it's even close yet. But, but it is. Okay. I've talked to you a lot. <coughs>
bit, but a lot of stuff I'll jump right over because we've already talked about it. Okay? All right. This is when I still got into it. Jimmy Carter in the 1970s. Only three of us in this room will remember when he did this speech. You can't remember that. Well, you had to be like two years old or less. Who was little bitty? Not that little bitty. You remember this? Yes, I do. Can you tell me what he said and why he did his speech? John, why did you give his speech that night? He said we had an energy crisis. He said there's countries in this in this on this world that don't like us and cut off our oil supply, and we were having trouble getting gasoline for automobiles in those years. And he went on to say, we must reduce our dependency on foreign oil. Then he started talking about energy efficiency. I'm going to tell you something else you've probably never heard anybody else say except right now me, okay? There's no relationship at all, zero, between dependency on foreign oil and energy efficiency. You can use all the insulation you want, you can caulk all you want to, you can put the best windows in every building there is in America, and it doesn't have any relationship at all with foreign oil. Here's how you have a relationship with foreign oil. You want to reduce it, then let's drive automobiles and get a better mileage. Let's don't drive as much. Got it? Or let's produce our own oil. Or type of their off fuel. That's how you reduce it. And if there's another way, I don't know what it is. It's sort of a stupid question, but what um, energy do they use for the houses? What it's type of energy? It, it's not oil. What type of energy do they use? Just they, they burn. I'll show you the, the ways that we that we generate. You're talking about electricity. I'll show you in a moment the cost of generating electricity with everything there is. Okay? Is that your question, though? Yeah. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm not avoiding your question because I've got it all. I've got it all up here, okay? All right. And Jimmy Carter then said, you ready for this, y'all? You ready for this? Back up on John. He said, guys and everybody, we got, it was wintertime. He said, we got to start wearing sweaters. <laughs> now, listen. In those days, men didn't wear sweaters. Sissies wore sweaters. <laughs> so I knew that wasn't going to work because nobody at the University of Arkansas that I knew or in Little Rock, Arkansas, no man was going to wear a sweater. Now, nowadays, we might wear one, and we sure would wear an ugly camouflage sweatshirt, wouldn't we? You know? A hoodie. A hoodie, yeah. I mean, we sure do that, okay. But, but I knew that wasn't going to work. And here's what else he said. Listen. And he said, we must lower the thermostats, wintertime. We must turn our thermostats down to 68. 68 degrees. Now, you understand this. I was a young whippersnapper. I didn't, my mind was on other things, I promise. And it wasn't on energy efficiency at that time. Okay? I was looking for a sweet wife and all these things. All right? You follow me? Fishing, hunting, and, and my girlfriend. All right, here we go. And singing. All right. So, uh, uh, I, but I thought, that ain't going to work. There's not a female in America going to be warm in the winter time with a 67 degree house. My wife's feet are cold on 100 degree days, y'all. You know? She don't like me to tell that, but it's absolutely true. <laughs> Her nose, I'm traveling this week, and she, she's right now thinking, boy, oh, my nose is so cold, she's thinking, you know? Well, yeah, yeah. I knew that wasn't going to work, and I thought, if that's the best advice that the president of our United States has to solve an energy problem in this country, we're in trouble. Saving energy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tracy, you good exercise tonight, aren't you? <laughs> okay, so I knew it wasn't going to work, whatever, and I was working for the Farms Home Administration. And my boss called me in. He said, go to Van Buren, Arkansas, and see why we have a subdivision. It has 47 vacant houses. I went to Van Buren, Arkansas, and I came back with this report. Mr. Hankins, the reason those houses are vacant is because their electric bills in the wintertime are three times what their house payment is. What happens to low-income families when they have uh, electric bills for, for three months that they can't pay? Your turn. Hurry. Uh, they don't have what did Volunteer Electric do? Took the, took the meters right off the house. The people moved where they go. I don't know. I went and found some of those people and said, why did you move? They said, because we couldn't pay our electric bills in the wintertime. Why did the electric bills so high? The answer is that we used no insulation at all in those years in houses. That shocks you, but it's true. And they had electric resistance heat. 
And when prices of energy in the 70s started going up, went from a half a cent a kilowatt hour to, to got, finally got to two cents, these people's electric bills just went like that, and the people couldn't take it and they moved. So my boss said to me, and he wasn't a very happy camper about this, he says, well, what can we do to help low-income families? I said, I don't know. He said, aren't you a licensed architect? I said, yes, sir. He said, you don't know anything about energy efficiency? I said, no, sir. Now, this is kind of what he said. You think you can learn? Now, I'm a young man at that time, and I just doubled my salary. You understand this? I didn't want to lose that job. And I kind of said it like this. I remember doing it. If you won't fire me, I'll try real hard. <laughs> now, that's how I got into this right there. Just like that. Do I think it's God's plan for my life? Absolutely. And I don't apologize one bit for it, okay? Yeah. Do I think he picked the right person to do it? I really do. People say, Doug, when are you going to retire? I mean, I travel a lot, y'all. I really do, okay? When are you going to retire? I say, I don't work. Do you think this has worked to me? I'll sleep good tonight. Driving home tomorrow at 80 miles an hour, I'll be tired driving with three fingers and not stopping but once in my whole trip, okay? But I'm trying to get home to see the racerbacks on TV tomorrow night, okay? <laughs> you know, and my wife, I have some chili or something made when I drive in, you know? All right, no, this didn't work to me. I love it. I love it. And why do people believe me? I'll show you why here in just a moment. So here I've been trying to help people all these years and learn and learn and learn. He says, see what we can do about it, okay? I can't believe this isn't working. Okay. <laughs> first thing up there, first thing up there, truth. When I start studying this, here's what I learned. 90% of the people, and I'm being nice, 90% of the people will just flat lie to you or misinform you to sell you their product. I can tell you right now, if, you were, if your bills were high and you were complaining and you called a window company, tell me what they're going to try to sell you. Windows. Even if you don't need them. And they'll let you pay them out for over a period of 180 years, whatever it takes. I can make it work out so you can have new windows. 75% of the people that call me at the office, I talk them out of buying new windows for their house. And the other 25% really need them badly, okay? But that's not what people need. Some houses need them, okay? If you call the insulation company, what are they going to sell you? Come on. Insulation. insulation. It don't matter what you, you call heating and air. Bubba says what? You know Bubba, he's got that T volunteer on his hands, you know Bubba, he spits a little bit on his side, you know who he is, okay, yeah, you call, and Bubba's already trying to sell you a bigger air conditioner, now he's guessing at what's wrong, he's going to make it work, or put more Freon in your unit, whatever, and the truth is, John, I want to amen on this, probably the problem has to do with duct work, and Bubba ain't never told you that, Bubba ain't never told you that your duct work's disconnected almost every house or that it's getting all its return air from the attic on a hot summer day you follow me he'd have to stay another five hours at your house to tell you that and they're not going to do that unless they think they got your job most of them don't do it anyway don't even know how to do it okay well i started studying this and i'm telling you it was a fast career i mean i mean then i learned about a blower door craziest thing i ever saw the first one we did had made this real real loud sound and I'm thinking, what in the world? And they turned it off. We went in the back, looked through the house, didn't see anything. Uh, the guy who was showing it, he says, turn it up. And they turned it up, turn it up some more. And you'd hear this click, click, turn it up some more, click, click, some more, click, 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 all the way up. Ta -ta 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 and went in the northeast bedroom of the house, and the carpet was coming up in the, <laughs> in the carpet on the floor just like this, coming up about a foot in the air. That's how much air was coming under the base plate where they ran out of concrete when they poured the slab. They came out like about a wheelbarrow short and just covered over and brick under it outside, sheetrock, put the trim on, put the carpet in, and it had it had a hole under there from about this big to this big at the corner, back this side like this, where all the cold air in the wintertime was coming under. I found that family where they moved, talked to them, said, why did you move? Said, our electric bills were so high we couldn't stay and our baby nearly froze in the wintertime in that bedroom. That was my first blower door I ever saw, and the carpet was flopping on the floor. And Bubba was getting ready to sell him a bigger air conditioner and heater. Okay, two years old, two years old in the house. Okay, well, I keep wanting to do this. <laughs> this, this, this is just like when you have an electricity failure at your house, for two days, you still go around, flip the switch in the bathroom, don't you? You know, nothing happens. 
nothing happens. Okay. I learned, I started studying, I learned that R value is a total myth, total baloney, total, total joke, mean nothing. Don't ever talk to me about R values because I can prove the R values mean nothing. Okay, that shocks some of you, right? You heard that? What is it? What? What is it? R value? R value is what the entire nation uses as a gauge of how good insulation is. The higher the R value, the better the insulation. And that's a, and that's a true statement, okay? The problem is the way they test and assign a R value to a product in a laboratory in a metal box isn't anything like at all like it is at your house with somebody going in and out the door in the wind blowing. Okay, it's all, it's all, I'll, I'll try to be nice now. Okay, and I knew this when I was in college, a thermos bottle, a thermos bottle has no insulation at all, but it'll keep your coffee hot or your iced tea cold, right? How's it know which to do? <laughs> I got stories on all this, I wish I had time to tell them all. Bill calls me, the famous comedian, is one who gave me an answer on that in Indianapolis. I asked him that. He said, "What are you doing?" He was doing, he was doing a show in Indianapolis, and I was doing a seminar just out of Indianapolis. We met in a big, big, big uh, hotel there, and he said, uh, "I said, Bill," and they gave him that example, the thermos bottle. And he thought about it a minute. And he said, uh, "Here's what you do, Doug. Before you put the stopper in, go cold and put the stopper on real fast." <laughs> I heard him use that about a year ago in one of his tours somewhere he used that same story. All right. Well, anyway, anyway, R value means nothing. If I was in a jet plane right now at 31,000 feet right over Cleveland, Tennessee tonight, it's probably minus 40 degrees or colder up there right now. And the thickness of the walls on that jet are two inches thick. And you can get on the plane, touch the wall, doesn't it feel cold. 40 outside. Wintertime, it'd be minus 80 out there. I can take you to Alaska and show you where all the buildings built for World War I and World War II in Alaska are just six-inch walls. And I come, to, I come down here to Tennessee and say, I want to build on top of the mountain out here where it gets really, really, really cold. And everybody says, you got to do thick walls. you got to this. you got to. No, you don't. No, you don't. Wasting your money. Okay, move on. All this stuff plays together. Let's do, let's do a little college teaching here. This is fun. John, this was, you gave me a paper a while ago. It's like you just seen these, but you had it, okay? Ready? All energy comes from the sun. I did an article recently on a, on a hot summer day, and I got up. I, we live on a 400-acre lake in my house. My boat's parked in the yard and all this stuff. Lots of glass looks over the lake. I watch the eagles. I watch the fish. I watch everything. And that morning, the sunrise was beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. And I'm writing the article. I try to do it before I get a lot of phone calls. I'm writing my article. And it dawned on me, this is back when we had some 110 degree days in the last two months, okay? And it dawned on me, this beautiful sun that's coming up right now, nine hours from now, it's going to try to kill us. But all energy comes from where? The sun. As we know it, okay? There would be no rain, there'd be no wind, there'd be no trees, there'd be no food, there'd be no, no, there'd be nothing if it wasn't for the energy from the sun. Okay, next slide. I want you to memorize three things or write it down, ready? First law of nature, he always moves toward cold. Technically, there is no such thing as cold, it's absence of heat. Now, I assume that this is a cooling system running loud here we hear now. It's a little loud. I don't know if y'all noticed that or not. Yeah. Okay. Do what? I can't hear you. <laughs> Does it have to be that way? No. But that's how it is, isn't it? And we'll all suffer from it. Okay. So the heat doesn't rise? Pardon? Heat doesn't rise? Uh, it, it, it does. Warm air rises? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It always moves toward cold, though. Okay. Any direction. Any direction it wants to go. It Any goes. direction. And, it, and, it, and it's easier to go up than it is either way with heat. Okay? A absolute zero is absolute zero. Are we cooling, are, are, we, are, we, are we putting cooling in this room right now, yes or no? Yes. How are we doing that? Because really we're not, but we are. How are we doing it? We're removing the heat. That's why that big unit out there, an alpha took you out there. You think it's loud in here? Let me take you out there and you stand by that big water tower out there where the steam's coming off of it. Got it? 
what are we doing? This equipment is taking the heat out of this building, taking it out there and cooling it off to the earth, to the air. When you're cooling a house, you're actually removing the heat. That unit sits outside. You remember how hot the wind air is that comes off of that? That's how it all works. That's how it all works. This is why your windows sweat in the wintertime. Some people's do. It's because the heat, and hit the next one. Here's the other one. Moisture always moves toward dry. Always. Let's take, a, let's take an oven in the kitchen, okay? And it's been cooking. You felt this before. I mean, this can be real forces. It can. When you open the oven immediately and you're leaning over it, tell me what happens. It hits you hard, doesn't it? The heat goes, pow! Boy, it, it does. Let's, let's take the day when you're in your car and you got your glasses on. It's a hot, humid day out there and you had your air conditioner, got the, you got your car so cold like you really like it, right? And you open the door and step out, what happens? And you can't see through your glasses and it fogged over and that, that's these two things is every bit of it. If you understand these two things, young man back there in the, the student, if you don't understand these two things, you can figure out a whole lot of things about energy on your own. Why do the windows sweat? Because cold air can't hold as much moisture as warm air does, so inside the house is warm and moist. Heat's trying to go to the cold and moisture trying to go to the dry. It goes to the coldest surface it can find and that's where it condensates. If I put another pane over that window, it won't condensate. If I blow air on it to evaporate it, it won't condensate. If I warm the window or lower the humidity of the house, you won't have sweaty windows. Okay? That's just how it is. And, and, and on the, I do this by phone. I get calls all day long. I didn't take them off today. I don't know how many I got today. But remember these two things. Now, I want to show you something. When these two things happen, just these two things alone, I'm going to show you what can happen that's a gigantic, unbelievable force of nature. Now, I drove through Joplin again last week. I've got, I showed John today pictures of Greensburg, Kansas. You remember that story? That town in Kansas that was totally 100% wiped out. There was nothing left, not even a tree. Totally wiped out. And I got a chance to go there and teach about energy and, and, and challenge them to build back to be the most energy and greenest town in America. And I didn't know they even built anything back. And then I got a call to go out there just a couple of months ago and do my radio show. And that town is, that town is everything in it is new and is, is Energy Star, LEED certified, the new school is geothermal and solar and wind turbines everywhere. I mean, I mean, they've done it. The government paid for most of it, okay? But they did it, they've done it, see? It's unbelievable what they've done. But it was totally wiped out. What caused it to be wiped out? A tornado. A big tornado. Joplin, Missouri is a big, big, big town, so all of it was not destroyed. Before that big tornado stopped and stayed for about 15 minutes, there was nothing left there. It's, an, it's something you can't comprehend how many cars were stacked up on top of buildings and, and buildings were on top of it. It's unbelievable, okay? And it's all caused from two things. Your turn. Tell me what caused it. Two things. Moisture. <laughs> Gulf moisture getting toward a dry line, they call it. That's what they call it on the, on the Weather Channel, right? There's a dry line. And that moisture from the Gulf, the bigger the difference, the harder it's moving. Remember that in your house. A cold winter night, the more that the heat's trying to get out of your house, that's why your bill's higher. You got it? If it were 74 degrees every day, like today, you'd open your windows. Everybody agree? We ain't worried about heat and cooling today in, in, in a house if you're going to open the windows. But as those, as those two temperatures start getting further apart and further apart, the forces literally are forces. They literally are forces. Okay? And when that happened here, when the moisture hit the dry line and when the cold air, the cold front hit the dry, the, the uh, warm front, and if it's something gave it a chance just for a second to make it start spinning, then all of a sudden it starts shooting that up and making the real, 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 real cold air come down, which makes the delta T bigger, 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 and so it just... I spent three weeks in Kansas 
in the last uh, few months teaching from one end of Kansas to the other doing seminars where people got four hours continuing edu education credits. The first two days I was up there, John, I photographed the tornado. And the people around there don't even pay attention to them. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm calling my, got my wife on the phone. I said, look, the weather channel, hurry up. I, I see a tornado across the interstate in front of me. Are there any severe weather watches out there? And she looks, she says, well, they said some thunderstorms, and I finally found a, a little radio station in a town over there, and it says if you're between mile marker 203 and, uh, and 211, why, well, you should take cover immediately. And I didn't know where I was, except I was watching this storm for hours, okay? Seemed like hours driving. Okay? And I looked at the next mile marker I saw was 205. And the trucks in front of me all pulled off to a spot, and I said, I'm pulling off behind those trucks, and, and watch that. Tornadoes go across the go across the countryside and across the interstate. All caused by those two things. Don't forget that. And that was all caused from heat, which came from the sun. sun. It all all the energy comes from the sun. Next one. About fifty one percent of all the rays of the sun are absorbed in the earth. We could take time on this, but we won't. Okay. A lot of it goes other places and whatever. But when we start talking about geothermal, and I tell you that geothermal is seventy five percent solar. It's because 51% of all the heat rays from the sun are absorbed in the earth somewhere today, okay, approximately that, whatever it is. I don't know how they measure it, by the way, but, 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 but it's there. And all we're doing with geothermal is we're just borrowing the, borrowing the energy from Mother Earth that the sun put there. And in the wintertime, well, uh, no, in the wintertime, we're taking it out. And in the summertime, we're going to put it back in the earth. I mean, that's how easy this is. This is how easy this is. Next one. Heat travels three ways. Y'all know this, surely. Conduction, convection, and radiation. If I took time, I'd explain, give you examples of all this. Uh, if my oven's been cooking a cake and I reach in there and grab the, the metal, it burns my hand fast. Everybody understand? That's conduction. But I can put my hand in the air in there with the door open and leave it quite a while before my hand cooks. That'd be convection. And radiation would be what heat I'm getting off the element that's glowing red in that, okay? Next one. Here's what I'm trying to do in America. Next one. Notice I made this one green. <laughs> I want to teach you how to use feasible, cost effective, common sense, green methods to improve the energy efficiency of your new or existing home. It's good for our country and it's good for the consumer. And I've never had anybody say that was wrong. Everybody agree? If I can do this, well, that's good for the consumer, you, and it's good for our country. And it's a win-win, win-win deal, okay? But it's got to be these things, feasible, cost-effective, common sense, green, et cetera, et cetera. Next one. Everybody wants green, right? No, we don't. No, we don't. You're talking about money. Oh, yeah, money. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, here's what I've learned about green all across the country. We want green, and we like to talk green as long as it fits our lifestyle. There's a few people that will sacrifice lifestyle to have something green or environmentally good and this and that, okay? But most don't. Most don't. If it's convenient to do it, energy efficient that, some will. And if it's not, well, we'll let somebody else do it, all right? I heard a lady say one time, we was talking about different kind of light bulbs, et cetera. And I've got a new one you've never seen. It's unbelievable, okay? And, and she says, whenever Las Vegas turns out some lights, I'll be concerned about it too. Well, it's kind of, kind of right. I mean, why do you, you agree? Las Vegas hasn't turned out any lights. <laughs> okay, next one. Now, here's the thing that we all agree on about green, though. Everybody would agree that the greenest BTU is the one we don't use or waste. That's called conservation. That's not energy efficiency. That's conservation. We would all agree, whether we practice it or not, we would all agree that it's good to conserve energy, yes? Okay, good. there's lots of ways to do that too, like turn them off uh, if you're not needing them, okay? You can always wave and get them back on, yes. A BTU is a British thermal unit, that's one unit of heat. BTU is, a, is heat, it's heat. And thanks for asking that, I assume everybody knows that, uh, that's great that you asked that. One BTU is a fire which you get from a match. Strike a match, that's a fire Yeah, okay, next one. Well, we, do any of y'all hang your clothes out on the clothesline? You know, not many people do. Some places I go, quite a few do, actually. In Kansas, quite a few do, but I mean, the wind blows out there like 
they'll, they'll dry in 15 seconds. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that kind. Of, but no, typically, you know, people are not. They're going to use their dryer, aren't they? You know, they're going to use their washer. They're not going to hang them out. And and he can't do it where I live because we have a POA, and you, see, you can't do anything in your yard. You know what I'm saying? You can't park your boat there. You can't put a car up on a brick. You can't. Uh, if we were to put a close on a close line, well, they get a warning one day and we get fined the next day. Okay, next one. Do any of y'all ride your bike to school? Do any of you live close enough to ride it to school or work? I know a lot of people like Fayetteville, Arkansas. We have a lot of funky people in Fayetteville. Uh, we have 109 miles with with three other towns of bike trail now. It's really pretty neat. It really is. It goes. It's a big one for It's a nice stuff, okay? And these same guys right here, they'll never go to work like this. I had to take this picture from somewhere else. It wasn't a real picture, okay? All right? They go to work in their BMW. And then as soon as they get home, they put on their helmet and their skinny britches and this and that, get on their bicycle and ride 50 miles. And you have to watch them where you run over them like we saw the girl get hit today, didn't we? I mean, okay? You, you, you follow me? Yeah, why, why don't they ride it to work? Well, yeah, I, yeah, but it's health, really, not, not green. Okay, next one. We would all like a green world. Shake your head, yes. We'd all like a green world. Okay, but the facts are, it's an all electric world. Like it or not, everything you got is electric. <laughs> it may be batteries, but it uses electricity. Everything the kids got for Christmas have to use electricity. Most of the things you got use electricity. My wife bought something just a few months ago that almost I gave her real fits of. She got a robo a ro ro robo vacuum cleaner. Oh, those are awesome. Well, I know that, but I thought they were stupid. Every you don't time vacuum, do you do it? Huh? You don't do the vacuum. Yeah. I do now. <laughs> Every did you time. Name it? Yeah, I did. Mine's like Rosie. Rosie. Like <laughs> from the Jets. My you, oldest son named her Rosie. Had you seen it somewhere and knew they worked? How'd you know about it? I bought it off of one of those shopping channels because I was working, um, had my kids at home. I thought this would help me to get some things done without. It's kind of unbelievable, isn't it? But she bought it, and when you've been married 45 years, you and travel all the time, you really can't really say much about it. You know what I'm trying to say? That's a modern a marvel, I'm telling you. Okay? When, she, when she goes, if I know she's going to be going for an hour to get her hair done, I take mine in there, and I set it down, and I go in on the phone, I close a couple of doors so it can't get out of the neighborhood, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and turn that thing on. And if every time, if it only runs for 15 minutes, I am absolutely shocked at how much stuff that gets off the floor and out of the carpet. We're not dirty people. We're hardly ever there, okay? And then I can hit a button. You can tell them this right. Uh, docking system, tell them how you dock it. Uh, Hit the button that says docking, and it goes beep, 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 beep. It moves a couple, you know what you're talking about? Yeah. It goes beep, 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 turn forever, and it'll go back and find this docking station, pull up on there, start charging. And mine, mine got sick, because she kept thinking she had something stuck in the wheel, so I've had mine all apart in ways that I couldn't get it apart, and finally repaired it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my, my point being is, y'all, everything we get and do uses electricity. We're, we're, I, I don't see in the future us ever not needing electricity. So, so my about five years ago, I changed my entire thinking about this thing and say, okay, everything's going to use electricity. Now, how can we produce it and use it wisely? Which I was already doing, but I've just got more convinced now that. How many of y'all got a gas furnace in your house? Everybody's all electric. Well, that's unusual. They've been listening to these people for volunteer energy. I guess so. But this is the first group ever, small group, okay, 
first group beverage, I usually ask this question, how many have a gas clothes dryer? In the south, nobody does hardly. As soon as I get a little further north, lots of people do. And I'll say, how many of y'all got a gas clothes dryer? Well, the hands will go up and I'll say, no you don't, 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 anybody else? No you don't. They say, yes I do. I say, well, why do you plug in the wall? Then the next thing I say, and, and you're the first group that didn't, nobody raised their hand. How many of y'all in this room have a gas furnace for heat? Okay, and nearly over half the room most of the time, the hands go up. I say, no you don't, no you don't, don't fall for it twice. Okay, why do you have to have electricity in? We have to have it so the thing will work. That's what runs the motor and blows the air and does all the stuff, you see. And when I learned all this, you understand, way back when I first started studying this, I've not put gas in a house in 27 years, and I've taken it out of hundreds and hundreds of houses. The first thing I do on a house to make it energy efficiency, if the gas furnace and all is old and the water heater is old and all that, I yank the gas out of the house and take the meter off the house, gas meter off the house. You now have some idea of one of the companies that don't like me. <laughs> See, I can, I can say that now, and I don't care if they like it or not, but now when I was a government employee, that was a little different. Got it? Next one. How many of you have an iPhone or similar, right? Four of our grandchildren have an iPhone. The, the two that just started kindergarten, and both of them have iBook or an iPad. Guess what I bought my wife for four, four years for Christmas? I Ron. <laughs> Move on. I Ron. <laughs> Write it down. I R O N. <laughs> Does everybody now know the answer? <laughs> okay. Okay, how about gas? Go through this real fast. You know, the gas flows dryer, they say, oh, I've got one. I've got some. Well, half the thing is electricity, it makes everything work, and the controls too. Next one. I, I can't get these off my slides for some reason. I don't know why I can't, but I can't. Okay. And then ask them about how many got a gas furnace. Here's what happens up north. They all say yes, and I say, why are you plugging the wall? And somebody always raised their hand and said, I got a 90 plus gas furnace. Got it? And that's the highest efficiency you can get. Most are 80s. If a gas furnace is 80% efficient, does that sound good or not? I mean, that means it wastes how much? Is that one out of every five gallons it wastes? All of a sudden not sounding as good, is it? And I tell them up there, up north, I say, that's why it never snows on your gas flues. It don't matter how much it snows. There's no snow around your gas flues because it's heating it all the time. Why doesn't the government come along somebody and tell somebody what I'm telling about this? How many gas flues are there in America? It's billions of them, okay? And they're all wasting at least 20%. All of them are. And John comes along to his Lord or test and says, I'm going to stop up these two holes. This house is a lot better. Is that right, John? Right. Well, what are those two holes? Gas flues. So that on a, so, so that on a, a, a gas uh, furnace, at least 20% of all the gas goes right up to the birds, right to the atmosphere. On every house there is, it has gas. Gets worse in a minute. Gets worse in a minute. So, but someone always says, you ready? They say, I got a 90%. Or I say, okay, I'm proud of it. And you paid for it. And they go, oh, yeah, it was expensive. Okay, if it's 90%, how much does it waste? Yeah. One out of every 10 gallons. Better, yes. You want to know how, what they had to do to a gas furnace to make it more energy efficient? They put another motor in it. And these people up north that's supposed to know this, they go like, golly. To make it take it from an 80 to a 90, they put another motor in it so that they can recirculate the air through it again through the burner so it burns more of the gas before it goes out the flue. So it uses less gas and more electricity. <laughs> Write this down. Write, that's your clouds. <laughs> yeah, it's clouds. Write this down. That gas furnace is 80 or 90% efficient. 80 or 90. That's the best it possibly can be. Got it? Let's take a geothermal heat pump. What do you think the energy efficiency of a geothermal heat pump on heating? You want to take a wild guess on that one? Some are 500% efficient. Nearly all of them are at least 400% efficient. Now, I don't know where you went to school, but I'll bet you know this answer. Would you rather have an 80 or a 400% efficient unit? 
y'all, you're bad behind on this in Tennessee. If you, I'm, you'll, you'll have my phone number at the very last thing today, okay? I want you, if you figure out a real reason why you are so far behind on geothermal, I want you to call and tell me. I mean, I'm, I'm dying to know what, what, I just know down deep there's something that I'm not, I'm not learning over here on geothermal. There's something holding it back. It may be the gas in it. Well, no, no, you all have gas furnaces, not that. Volunteer, let's take heat pumps. Done right, they're about 200, 250 cent efficient, okay? What happens in the wintertime that uses a lot of electricity? What's one of y'all's problems in the wintertime when it gets really cold? The uh, peak days. The emergency heat kicks in, which runs those electric heat strips. The heat strips and defrost cycles, right? Did you know that geothermal don't have either one of those? Would that help you all if you didn't have those peaks in the winter? Yes. Customers would be happy too. Have you told everybody that? Huh? Have you have you told have you stood up, put some out, said, hey, listen, people, let's don't be stupid anymore. See, that's how I talk to. Why you need to have me come back and volunteer sometimes. They won't let us recommend. I know, but I can. I know. So why don't you have me back? Mm -hmm. I'm crying. Yeah, I'm serious, I believe. I'm serious, I believe. Why? You've known me a long time. And you believe me, don't you? John, you've known me. And we've traveled being a mile together, haven't we? I was in your car the night that we had to peak. No, don't talk about <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you don't want a third party in your car when something's happening with a power company, you understand? And I, I, John's on that phone, I'm listening to that, I said, oh my word, oh my word. <laughs> They're getting ready to close down some big industries because of the peak thing today and send everybody home. And I'm thinking, well, now that's great. Send them home so they can all turn on their TV and do the close try now. <laughs> that's one of those things that they wish they never heard me say, okay. But it, why do people believe me? There is a reason. There is a reason. And it's not because I'm smart and all that. Okay. Why do people believe me all across America? How come my radio show be on there for 22 years and nobody ever exposed me as to something but a fraud or something? Because it's true. Huh? Because That's right, but that's not it. That's you're not, not the reason. Then you're not selling anything. I don't sell anything. I don't even get paid for the radio show. Does that shock you? Yes. I don't get paid. <laughs> I don't even own my radio show. The sponsors on the radio show, some of them send quite a bit of money to the people that own it, and I don't get a penny of that back. My wife don't like that. So for years, she said, why do you use every Saturday and don't take any money? And the answer is real obvious, why don't I? Believe in what you're saying. No, because <laughs> if I start taking your money, I'm not a third party that I can be honest with you on it. Follow that? Yes. And I'm not bragging about that. I'm just telling you, that's a fact. But God has blessed me in a lot of ways that that doesn't make any difference. It hadn't always been that way, okay? I mean, God's blessed me, but I mean, I don't have to be here doing this meeting if I don't want to. But I'm getting paid for it, aren't I? <laughs> okay. <You are>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. <laughs> yeah, but I've been gone now. So I've been gone for nearly a month on the road. Next one. Next one. House breathing, we've already covered that. Houses don't need to breathe. And this is a whole, this is a whole week's training right here about all the places. And that's how we first started teaching about blower doors, all the places. Outside air gets in your house, and these forces happen. And here's how simple this is on energy efficiency. If the cold never gets in your house, or the hot, humid air never gets in your house, it doesn't take much to heat and cool your house. Got it? And I can control your heating and cooling on your house if you do what I teach you. And I can control most of your hot water cost if you do what I teach you. But I don't control your TV watching and your swimming pool pumps. You follow me? I don't have any control over those things. But the items that are the biggest items, which is heating, cooling, and water heating on the typical house, I can really help you on that. And if you're going to build a new house, see, I wish I could stay over here for two months with these builders. You're going to build a new 2,000 square foot house anywhere in America. You do what I teach you, I guarantee in writing, you can heat and cool your house for a dollar a day. All on that. Dollar a day. 
It's easy, and it's so easy, it's unbelievable. I can go to your existing house with John and some others here and spend a couple of days working on your house. I can probably cut it in half what you're paying for heating and cooling now, but I can't get in the walls. Like, you know what I'm saying? When you build a house, it's so easy. It's just unbelievable to me that everybody don't do it. It's just unbelievable to me. Next one. Doug, one thing before we leave this, I think the Department of Energy confirms this number 0.5 air changes per hour. Does that mean that every hour, half of the air in the house leaks out and has to be replaced by cold air in the winter, by other air. summer? The answer is that's exactly what it means. Half the air. You know, a tighter house, it's only 20% of the air. Yeah, a typical Doug our house is not airtight. I try like you can't believe to make it airtight, but I just can't do it. I mean, uh, nature nature's smarter than I am. When I built my wife's new house, see, she got a new house and I got a boat, okay? And uh, when I built her new house, which I'll show you a picture of, I think, in a minute, that's what it might be in your set. And uh, uh, we, try, we try to make them totally, totally airtight, but they're not. People ask me sometimes, say, well, where's the air coming from? We'll test them, they'll be about 0 0.17, 18, 19, 0 0.2, okay, which means 20% of all there in our house is fresh air, even though I tried to stop it all. And I know that's true because I can go turn the bathroom vent fan on it, fan on it, it works. I can turn the, the uh, big old range hood over her. My wife's kitchen costs $55,000 on her new house. It's been featuring three magazines. She ain't cooked in nine years. See, ladies always laugh like, ha, 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 ha. I mean, there's a lot of truth in that, seriously. She's a good cook. She does cook some, but, you know, we travel most of the time. I mean, our kids are grown and thank the Lord successful. We don't have to baby. You know, come back and see the grandkids and go somewhere else. Yeah. Right. But anyway, but here's something every one of y'all can do. You can do them right now, and you ought to do it before winter. Go to the home center, get your gaskets. Take a Saturday morning or something. If you're a coffee drinker, make you some coffee. Get your donut. Take your time going around through the house and put these gaskets on every single electrical plug and light switch that you got in your house. If the wind's blowing outside, you can feel air coming around every one of those, including into your walls. And you just take your screwdriver, be careful, don't stick it back behind there, touch those two wires, and just put those on there, and you'll be absolutely amazed how much air you can stop from going in your house by doing this. Oh, even on the yeah, I'll show you why in a minute. Interior walls, you do a motor test, are just as bad as outside walls. The reason is because Bubba drilled those two inch holes to pull wires from your attic, and it has the same, and your interior walls don't have any insulation. Actually, you get more air down through those a lot of times than you do the outside walls. When we build a new house, we caulk those holes and you get smaller holes. I'll show you that picture in a minute. So that air, see, remember, we're talking about these pressure differences, air moving toward this, cold moving toward that. You got a real cold attic in the wintertime, that cold air is heavier than light, than warm air. It's going down through those holes and falling down through those walls. And if the wind's blowing on the house, your house has a different pressure. It's sucking, it's literally sucking air into that house on the whole side where, that, where the wind's blowing. Now you can't feel it going out the other side of the house, but the same amount that's coming in, it's going out the other side. You'll feel over here, and you say, oh, I'm going to put these on there over there. Well, the truth is, go do it on the other side, too, because there's the same amount of air going out those on the other side of the house that's coming in on this side. This don't cost you hardly anything except a little bit of elbow grease. Got it? Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. Next one. Call, 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 call. Basically, y'all, you just get caulking. The dry is clear. Take a cold winter day, dampen your hand with a wash rag or something around the room filling all the places where the air comes into that house. Cut little bitty things over of here. This is white, but it says clear on it. When it dries, it'll be clear and you can't even tell it's there. You're gonna find places everywhere. You're gonna find around the window frames and all this and that. You say, well, feel that air. Yeah. When you do a blower door test, of course you can find it real fast. And you just go, you just go shh, 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 and let it dry, you know? And, and you may use on your house, who knows? You may use five tubes of caulk or you may use 35, 40 tubes of caulk. And all you're doing is really simply this, stopping cold air from coming in in the wintertime and hot humid air in the summertime from coming in your house. The best energy buy in America is right there. Got it? Caulk, caulk, caulk. Keep in doubt, caulk it. Next one. Here's what it's talking about here. This interior wall, electricians typically drill two inch holes to pull these little wires through. 
So here's a two inch hole here, two inch hole here, where the wire's coming down in an open wall. In the winter time, that's, a, that's the same place the mice come in. Follow that? On a new house, we do it before we're building the house. We caulk, caulk, caulk real fast. On your existing house, you know, why it, you got a, it's a little, little harder, it takes a little more time. But, but it's, it's, this is big stuff. I mean, it's cheap to do, easy to do, and that. While I'm on this, because this is brand new, y'all haven't seen this yet. Uh, there's not a little lamp anywhere in here, is there? Like just a regular little lamp. Everybody knows what compact floors and both are. Yes. A lot of people don't like them. I'm not particularly fond of, to be honest with you. Okay. Do they save energy? Yeah, they do. Uh, there's some new ones of those out even, okay? You, you can find these Walmart different places called smart bulbs, and they're instant on, instant bright. I wish I had a lamp to show you these, okay? They're it's instant on. Stairways, there's nowhere to fit those that don't yet instantly come on. You know, you can be down the bottom steps without I wrote, I, wrote a, I wrote an article that went to 19 states. Do y'all carry my, my monthly article? I wrote an article in Illinois, I won't ever write it about compacts again. I got calls from people that were unhappy with compact fluorescence. This is back in the early days. They were, they were pretty sorry for a while, you know. And this guy called me and he said, I knew he was old because here's what he said. I'm not as fond of these Dairy Queen bulbs as you are. <laughs> you know what Dairy Queen bulbs are? Dairy Queen used to be the curl. You know what? Okay. So I knew his age as soon as he said that. Okay. I said, what's your problem? He says, hell, I put one on my staircase going down. I can be down there and back up and three times and ain't got bright enough to see the stairs yet. <laughs> and I said, well, maybe that's not a good place for them. <laughs> okay, on and on and on. Okay, but they, they make some now that are instant on, instant bright, and look like bulbs. Got them? I've got some in my bathroom that were pretty cool. There's they're, they're all kinds of them. And some of them, you buy six of them. Uh, I've got one in a property in Federal, Arkansas that has been on for, uh, i say at least 12 years. It's never burned out yet. I can go buy six more and put them in, and out of those six, one of them will burn out in a week every single time, no exception. The other one might burn out in a month or, you know, whatever. And they, they don't last seven years. They're all made in China, of course, okay? But, they got, but there's some out now, some pretty, pretty nice ones that look good and are this net okay now instant on if i had a thing right now to show you six ones okay they play a little trick on you i'll tell you a little trick that none of y'all know how many y'all got electric range kitchen right bro you notice when you turn it on it's instant on it's red that's a halogen bulb in there The biggest reason we found out years ago that women didn't like electric ranges because it took them long a while to get warm. So they put a halogen bulb in there, red halogen bulb. So when you turn it on, it glows red. So in your mind, you're thinking it's on immediately. <laughs> this has a halogen chip in it. See, it still takes a little bit of time for a compact fluorescent because it's gas to get warm enough to be full bright. So when you plug this one on, turn it on, the halogen clip comes on, and this comes on up here, and it's super bright immediately. And as this gets brighter, the halogen chip goes off. See what you're learning? You know that, John, you didn't know that one, did you? Uh, these general electric, they're called smart bulbs. That's why they're smart. They trick you. They're nice, they work well, okay? But listen, if I had something to show you with this, this is so new, John hadn't seen that, and nobody else has either. I got that in Greensburg, Kansas. The government sent them a supply when I did my meeting there and they handed them out to everybody that attended that meeting. This is a $30, and I don't know what to call them. It's an LED, but I, they're, not, they're not light bulbs. Feel that, okay? What I'm telling you, I, I used it a couple of nights ago up in Missouri, and when I kicked, we had a lamp up there, and when I kicked it on, everybody did their eyes like this. You can't believe how bright that is and uses almost no electricity. Would that take the place of your can lights? Well, they're making some that do take the replace of them. Oh, no, you already can buy can lights, right. the whole thing, that are LEDs. Yeah. And that price has come down from like $35 down to like 17 already. Would you leave that on all the time? I wouldn't be afraid to. 
I mean, if you had a place that you needed to, yeah. but that's bright. I mean, that would have been Because it's not really using any energy. Yeah. It uses almost no energy. I wish I had a, you don't know where there's a little lamp, do you, anywhere? Just a little, oh, let me check the lamp. like a lamp, we take a lamp. People are eating this up when they see it, they just can't believe it. They just can't believe it. That's made the Phillips. What do you think the life is supposed to be on that bulb right there? It's not a bulb. I don't know what to call it. Help me find out what to call it. Okay. It well, is this lamp. Lamp. It says lamp. Lamp. Yeah. What, what do you think? The, tell them what the life is on it. Uh, Indefinite. 22.8 years. How many? 22.8 years. 22.8 years. years. How old are you? 18. I've been telling, I've been telling kids this. I say, if you get a 30-year loan on your new house, well, when you sell that house in 30 years, the loans of the house is paid off, you may have to change out your lines too. <laughs> Isn't that neat? you got to see this. I mean, it, it'll almost blind you somewhere out there. I like that. Yeah. Did you feel that? Is it heavy like motel? Yeah. 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 Now what is, what, oh, you're, they're going to go get a lamp? If they find a little lamp, I'm going to plug it, it in. It, it heats up and it radiates? How does that work? Is it like a heat lamp? Yeah. Yeah. How does that work? I don't know how they work. Bob, what does LED stand for? Huh? What does LED stand for? Light, Light emitting diode. Got Here, here's what I'm saying to you. Here's what I'm saying to y'all. If I come back here in five years or something, we won't even talk about compact boards. Or something. That's how fast this is changing. Uh, I bet we do on this one. Uh, let's do a. Uh, we don't have a regular LED in there, do we? Anybody got a regular? Just I should have in my box. Let's let's. Uh, I'm not sure that went there, but I think it will. Thank you, Will. Okay, it's right here. Okay, just turn around and we're blind. <laughs> okay, here, listen, can you put that in there for me? Yes, sir. Okay, this is the smart bulb, and watch this, how bright it is immediately, but again, it's playing a little trick on you, okay? Ooh. See, but it's, it's all it's bright. And that little LED, if you, if you do it, I know where it is right there. It'll start going down. And watch this. Watch this. Uh, right now, right now they're about thirty dollars a piece, but they've just made the first ones. I got some of the first ones made. I'd say when they hit Walmart, they'll be fifteen maybe, and two years after that, five. Wow! And you're not seeing the back side of it, you know? Okay. And that's twelve point five. Understand that's not a light bulb. <laughs> it's a lamp. I'll remember that. So you don't want to call it. It's a lamp. Okay. All right. Okay. So it's just a. <laughs> okay. So I, I've been wanting to show people that. It's because it's fun to show you something brand spanking new like this. Yeah. Five years from now, compact forest in my opinion, won't even exist. Won't even exist. Yeah. Be sure I get that bag back there now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, caulk it, caulk it, caulk it, keep going. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do you have a do you have an infrared camera or access to it? There's there's so much you can learn from infrared cameras now. It's just this is one of the things in the last few years has just changed. Oh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> here's a here's a picture in the summertime. I've got to speed up or we'll be here till eleven. What time is it now? It's like, huh? Eight. Eight. Did you think you could sit here two hours? <laughs> Trouble leaving my bench. Wait, here, back okay. up, back up. Okay. I want to get there because we got to get laid building a house here. She wants to see where to call. Okay. Go ahead. Call, and, and you can call me, and we've got books here that can show you where all to call to. Okay. If right. anyone needs to leave, you know, we just say everybody needs to leave. Don't, don't, you won't hurt If you have to leave, leave, well, leave, yeah. But there's some stuff I, I'm trying to go fast, okay? On infrared camera, it just shows you what temperatures things are. And this is a house, an older, a older couple. They're a little older than me. And uh, this is Grandma's house, type Grandma's house, built in the late 50s. You've seen them all over, all over this 
stay, okay? Quarter inch paneling and you've seen it, okay? Well, they've got a three ton air conditioner but their electric bill's running $500 a month in the summertime on like 1,100 square foot house. So they can't use their cooling because they can't pay for it. So I was asked to go look at this and I had one to play with the camera some, okay? And anything that's wide is 97 degrees. And that's what the outdoor temperature was 97 on this day. And you look up there, taking a picture of this right here, it's true all around the house, but it's just one shot of it right here. And anything right there that's wide is 97 degree air. That's actually outside air coming through the soffit vents, going, it has six inch fiberglass bats in the attic and four inch fiberglass bats in the wall. So when you ask them, is your house insulated? They say yes. And it is. It just ain't working. First of all, it's fiberglass, okay? And we don't use fiberglass. We learned years ago, we don't use any fiberglass. Why? It doesn't work when it gets hot or cold. Period, period. We just don't do it. Whether you like it, don't. If you like me, if you don't, we don't use fiberglass. Okay, but what's happening here is the air is getting under the bats in the attic. They stick up above the sheetrock just a little. So the hot air comes in, goes under the ceiling, goes all the way across the room right there. I've got other pictures that show it touching out here in the middle. So you've got insulation, but it's not stopping most of the heat because it's going under the fiberglass. In the walls, it's going down in the walls. Here, John, heat is going down. The force, because of the difference of the hot attic and inside, it's a force that's actually forcing the heat to go down to get into the cooling, that cooling area. And you can see where the joints are in fact, in the four the four foot panels, the answer is to a cooler area. Going, to it, trying to get in this cold spot, the heat moves toward cold. Remember that, and it, it will even heat will even go down if it, if it's getting a force there enough to do it. Okay, which is what's happening here. All right, the answer to this was so simple, so simple, y'all. Back up. We took a we took a garden rake, went out to the outside edge, and pushed the fiberglass bats down to a touch of sheetrock. Then we sprayed six inches of cellulose over the top of it. Then we caulked every piece of wood trim in this house so the hot air couldn't get around that. And all of this went away because the heat can't get in there anymore, it can't get down through the wall, it can't get under the wood trim. And we did that all the way around this house and added six inches of cellulose over the top of all the fireplace. Now, next one. Walk in the hall, what's that? Attic fan. Attic fan. The attic's 103 degrees. That's why. Tell me, are these louvers hot or cold? They're hot. You got it? You can feel the radiation on your head standing under them in the summertime. You just feel your head just hot on it. Wintertime, what do you feel there? What would you guess? That cold air is just pouring down on you, okay? You already know this answer. Guess where the thermostat is that tells the heating and cooling when to come on. I took this picture, we, we just did away with the attic fan, took it out, destroyed it, put sheetrock over it, and put six inches, uh, 12 inches saddle right over the hole, because they hadn't used it in years. I make, I turn 180 degrees, take a picture right behind me, guess what I see there? Pull down stairway. Is that pull down stairway hot or cold? Very hot. <laughs> Where's the thermostat? Right between them. So what's happening in this house? There's nothing wrong with this air conditioner. And Bubba's been out there and wants to put a five-ton unit in this house. That's his solution. We need a bigger air conditioner in this house. No, you don't. No, you don't. We need to spend $1,000 to fix your house. When we finished, when we finished, the three-ton air conditioner handles this house perfectly, and those bills went down from $500 and some up to $125 a month. But what's happening is the thermostat's here, and everything around it is so hot that even though those rooms down there are cold, the thermostat doesn't know it, and it just keeps on thinking, I've been trying to cool this house for five weeks and it's still hot. You see why? We went to our internet and bought what's called an attic tent. Attic tent that goes over this whole thing here, it insulates it, seals it up, you can install it in like 30 minutes, okay? And that solved that problem. Now that's all we did on this house to make it darn good, okay? Okay, not perfect. We didn't redo their duct work and stuff. It had a few mistakes in it, but not they didn't have any big bad situations. Next one. Water heaters we already talked no heading. 
How many of y'all have a water heater in your house? You know, okay. And y'all don't have gas water heater. Well, nobody does. Do. You've got a gas water heater? I do. And you, and you don't have a gas furnace? I think so. Now I've got a gas stove. Okay. I have a little bit on houses. Okay. I'm surprised you don't have a gas furnace, too. Uh -huh. And you maybe do. Okay. If you went tonight, look at me, folks. If you went tonight to buy a brand new gas water heater, you ready to write it down? The highest efficiency it can be is 57% efficient. If something's 57% efficient, how much does it waste? 47%. Nearly half of the gas you buy for a gas water heater goes up the flue unburned. I'm taking Colorado in the wintertime when there's snow skiing, the condominiums have 10 foot of snow on one side or on the north side. You look closely, you'll see two holes coming out of the snow where there's no, there's no snow. That's the gas furnace and the water heater flues. That's like buying gasoline for your car, putting one in the tank, one on the ground. One in the tank, one on the ground. One in the tank, one. It's almost that bad. First things I do is yank gas water heaters out of houses, period, seal up the whole john so all that air don't go out of there and put them up to energy efficient water heater in that's guaranteed for life to never leak or rust. Next slide. There's just an example one morning I looked out the window of one of the neighbor's houses and see, see how the heat of the water heater is just keeping the snow off. Next one. I found a marathon water heater, found it myself quite by accident at the home show in, in Houston, Texas many years ago, probably about 11, 12 years ago now. Guaranteed for life to never leak or rust. Does Volunteer Electric sell these or tell you where to get them? Uh, we don't sell them. Sequatchie Valley used to sell them. They still sell them. And I think that does Highway Builders have them in stock now? Oh, they may. That's Secure County Electric also has. Secure County. All right. Now look at me. This is guaranteed for life to never leak or rust. I'm going to ask you a question. You should be able to figure out the answer. Why doesn't Lowe's have them? You got it. They don't want you to buy anything guaranteed for life. Exactly right. Do they know about them? Yes, they do. Okay. It's unbelievable. Why, why would it not leak or rust? The answer is very simple. It has no metal in it anywhere. Next slide. Look how insulated it is. Follow me. Here's the most energy efficient water in the world. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that one right there at our co-ops in Arkansas, 50 gallon is $799. I think that's around what they cost here In Illinois, you got a one company called Menards Lumber that's pretty big in Illinois. They all carry them there. And they learned about it because I'm on the radio all over that country. And people come in and say, you got marathons? So finally, they start carrying them. <laughs> okay. But that's $799 for a 50 gallon. Also, you can get all the way up to 105 gallon. This most energy efficient water heat in America is made in Louisville, Kentucky. It was made in China and we put a little pressure on them and they brought them back and started making them in Louisville. Just start finishing them over there in the last five months or so. Made with General Electric called the hybrid water heater. That water heater is 230% efficient. It's not guaranteed for life. It's been out a couple of years that we've had them in, metered them, and having great success with them. But I wish I had them a little longer to have a real feel myself if I want to really push these or not. But we put a lot of them in, and they're super, 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 super energy efficient. If your water heater is like located in a basement or in a garage, somewhere like that, this is a magnificent replacement right here. It'll actually cool, help cool your garage in the summertime for free. But if it's in, like, my water heater's underneath my stairwell and there's like a bed, that's you can't You can't off. put it there. It can't get enough air. It does, it, that is a tiny, tiny, tiny electric air conditioner on the top of a water heater. It's taking the heat out of the room and, or out of the carport or the garage or wherever it is and putting it inside the tank at super high efficiencies. It doesn't make heat, it just moves heat from there to there. I mean, when you put a meter on them, we've got a lot of them that aren't even running $12 a month for families to use all the water. The usage on them is just unbelievable. 
about twelve hundred dollars. Sears had them on sale all summer long for nine ninety nine. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can pull them up on the internet and order them. Sears order them. They didn't have them in stock. Uh, Lowe's actually had these for eleven ninety nine for a long time. Yeah, I, th I think they quit handling them. Not get these aren't guaranteed for life though. I don't know how many. They got a regular ten year warranty, one year on parts like whatever G has. Okay, but it's they're super energy efficient. Cellulose insulation. All insulation is not created equal. Uh, John, did you know about cellulose before we met? Uh, I don't know, Doug. No, I don't either. Cellulose insulation has been around 57 years. It's nothing more or less than ground up newspaper. I learned about it for soundproofing. I may need your help here, okay? All right. I learned about it in apartments for soundproofing. Can you hear that okay? Get your house out of cellulose insulation. You ready for this? It's not down somewhere, or you wouldn't hear any of it. A box is being something. It's pretty impressive, it's not. <laughs> I can tell you this for a fact: the Hampton Inn here in town does not have any cellulose. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I know that for a fact. I listen to Good Morning America, but. You know, next door, I don't have to turn my eye. But this is how I learned about cellulose insulation. It's also soundproof, fireproof, and bugproof. It's the greenest of all insulation. It's why it's ground up newspaper. Why would it not burn? It's like a Sears catalog. It doesn't have the air in it. You can't make it burn. You make it glow red, you can't make it burn. Okay, well you, this is a real mouse. If you plug him up good right in his rear end, it pop. Oh, got it. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, I see why. That was holding the lid up. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Now that's how I learned about cellulose. I was the person who started six inch fiberglass walls in 1974. That was me. Boy, Corny used to think I was the smartest man in the whole world because I was selling more fiberglass than anybody else. Yes? Is that more efficient, or better than the foam insulation? No, I'm not quite to that yet, but I'm close. No. Okay. It's all about air filtration. <coughs> so is foam. Okay. Watch this. No. Yeah, we'll give you the most quietest house. I, I did a house and I did the interior walls also. You just walk in there and you just fill with clients. At, at some home shows, we build a little three foot hall where, like, and, and take two booth spaces at a home show. We let you step in here, walk, and come out right here. And the home shows are usually, you know, oh, you know what I'm saying? You can't hear anything. And you can step in there and come right here and don't hear anything. No doors on the middle. I mean, you talk about selling cellulose. When people do that, they're like, golly, and they'll go back and listen to the, you know. <laughs> I've done houses so close to railroad tracks, you can't believe it. And you feel the ground shake on trains, but you can't hear the train. Yeah. Okay. Ground up newspaper. Soundproof. Never been a house burned down in America that's had cellulose in the walls and the attic. It's been around 57 years. There's no big companies. That's why you never heard of it. Hardly. Okay? That product is what we put in there that is fire retardant also, and also termites and roaches. If they walk on it, they will dehydrate within 24 hours. Don't poison them. They dehydrate. This is nothing more or less than 20 mil team boric soap, which us old people used to have in grandma's house. Now, I remember when I learned this, I remember my grandmother, when I was a little boy, took some kind of soap and got fruit jar lids and put soap in there and a little bit of sugar in the middle and it killed all the roaches. When she see a roach, she put that under the cabinet. I didn't even know what it was then. And when they went to the I said, I know what it is now. And she put a little bit of sugar in there and the roaches would come to the sugar and they'd walk on that, on that soap and they'd all die. They'd do away with them. We can put a torch, we've done this before. We can put a torch on a cellulose wall, it'll glow red and it will not burn. And your your electric bill, your your heating and cooling bill will be about 30% less than that house's fireplace. It's about air infiltration, it's about house breathing. Watch this. Here's 13 inches of fiberglass, 13 inches of cellulose. I'm going to turn a little heat on, turn a fan on, let it blow air up through here, 
and you tell me how long it takes for air to go through 13 inches of fiberglass insulation. Do it again. And that insulation is solid in there. See what's your what's your heat pump or your furnace filter made out of? Fiberglass. You understand? That, that's how it works. I can put I can put two inches of this over this, and that ball will never move. On your house right now, if you got fiberglass in your attic, if you if you have less than 13 inches of fiberglass in your attic, you need to add some cellulose right over the top of it, and it'll actually make your fiberglass start working because air can't go through it anymore. Okay, I'm going kind of fast on this, but any questions? This is how we do a new house. And we have a stud scrubber. If you spray it in, and we go flush with the wall. There's nothing in the wall except insulation. You can't see any wires, no holes, no staples, anything. That's how it does on the new trucks or new trucks. But we've got a vacuum system that vacuums it up, puts it right back through the machine, so we use it again. Question about cellulose? If you're going to blow cellulose in a new home, do you still need to do all that coffee? Everywhere that you can get insulation in, the answer is yes. But if you can, like, back a wall there. Quite honestly, quite honestly, those holes where the wires come to the top, the cellulose will stop that. Mm -hmm. But there's okay. a lot of other places in the wall where we can't get the insulation in that we caulk. Okay. Like in the baseboard, we caulk in those places. Mm -hmm. And caulk is so cheap and so fast to do if you know what you're doing. We, we on new houses, we caulk everything even if you don't need it. Because if you miss a place, somebody's going to say, you missed this, you know. And we just caulk everywhere. We caulk it all. Okay, next one. Here we go. Uh, skip this. This is Oak Ridge Testing Laboratory in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Y'all ever heard of that? They knew this way before I did and were afraid to tell the world because they got so much funding from other subplaces. Back up real fast, John. Engineers in Oak Ridge Testing Lab sent me their chart. And they said, you're exactly right. The, Fiberglass won't work when it gets hot, and it won't work when it gets hot or when it gets cold. If your attic in, in, in it, for three years in Minneapolis, they outlawed fiberglass in attics of houses. Okay, and lawyers and everything got that overturned, and now they allow it again. But the truth is, you can put R33 fiberglass in your attic, and when the attic temperature gets to zero degrees, that actually has a zero R value. And that's the other line, the pink line is in fact what Oak Ridge Station Lab door says cellulose does. I've got stores on all I got stores on all of this. That's can't tell you all of them. Okay, next one. Foam. Foam a great product. It's not green. It's chemicals. It insulates really well. It's also twice the cost of cellulose. There are some places where it's easier to do foam than it is cellulose. Now, who's building a new house? She's well, I'm doing an addition, a bedroom and a bathroom. Okay, well, if you're building a brand new house, I'm going to tell you what we found to be, in most cases, the best of all of all these, okay? You cellulose the walls and you foam your entire roof deck. You don't have an attic anymore, you don't ventilate anything up there because there's no attic left anymore. Those upstairs rooms are now inside the house. That's how you do how far are they behind over there on that? Bad? Foam, foam roof decks? Oh, we got several. Uh, got several they, they, people doing that over good. Then you have, if your duct works in the attic, you got leakage and all that, that's not really very critical because it's all in your house. But you don't have ridge vents then. You don't have any whirly birds or super suckers or any of that kind of stuff ever, ever again. Just forget all that. Uh, John? Why don't you try something? Say hello, stupid. <laughs> I just saw it there, and I thought, no wonder it didn't work. <laughs> Nothing to talk to. Can you see it? You might not can see it. We don't have a It should be. It should be right beside. It only has two ports, and I'm scared to take out the okay. last drives because I don't know which one. 
Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. That's all right. Okay. So we got both flash drives in? Uh -huh. To be sure? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Because I thought one well, of them was Well, this goes remote. in one of them, which allows my remote to talk oh, to me. That's all right. John, you're doing such a great job on it. I just hate to take you off of that. <laughs> I just, while I'm talking to you this whole time, I'm thinking, this has never failed to work. <laughs> they don't have it. It'll be down there where the others is. Also, do you get power? Uh, okay, never mind. We're, we're, we're getting close. We're getting close. Okay. okay. Foam's great. Fine. I've got houses with foam. People who have no, money is no object. Well, a lot of them go foam. I say, it's none of my business. But I, but your heating and cooling sizing on your house is no different. If it was all cellulose, you get the same, the same benefits. Okay. Next one. That's how we do crawl spaces. We no longer put foundation vents in them, all that kind of stuff, except code says you have to probably in Tennessee. So you go ahead and put them in, and then you just foam over them. <laughs> Next one. Can you use Corn. the cellulose as well? Pardon? In the, in the cross space? Yeah, yeah back up one, John. Yeah, this happens to be a steel frame house where they used all foam. Yeah. That could be that could be an inch and a half of cellulose. We had glue to it when we do that. and could spray it on the wall there, and that would be cellulose. You just don't, if you rub against it, it'll come off. And foam is easier to spray and costs more money, but it stays on there a little better. If you bump it, it doesn't hurt it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we do both. We do both. Next one. Framing on your new house, move on. Uh, this is a deal that you ought to do probably on your new addition. If you don't I foam your roof tank. Huh? I ordered that and set it in my backyard. Oh, you sweetie, <laughs> you. All right, way to go. That's called Tech Shield. I found this the same time I found Marathon Water Heaters. I first heard about it in 1965 when I was still in college. A young architect from Austin, Texas had developed a product and told us, if you'll put this on your roof deck, your attic will never get hot. None of us believed him. It was 20 years later when I saw it in a house down at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. I walk and I saw it and I says, Dad Burn, that stuff is still around. And I got it, took it to Arkadelphia, Arkansas in a house we were framing up and tried it. And the, the framers on that house started telling everybody, said, we eat our lunch inside the house. It's the middle of July. We eat our lunch inside the house now because it's cool than it is under the shade trees. Your attic will never get over about 105 degrees, even the hot, 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 hot summertime if you have that on your roof deck. That's how a thermospotter works, by the way. It's called radiant barrier. Is that, is that fiberglass? No. No, that is your roof deck. That is your roof decking up there. You're going to nail your shingles on. That's the, like the plywood, it's not plywood, it's OSB board. You got your trusses up and you nail this up there with a the shiny side down. And you got it in your yard. I know. All right. You were Where are you going? Pardon? The builders told her she was crazy. Yeah, our builders didn't recommend it. But Tell them mine they're all so business. Never heard of it before. Really? In Tennessee? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, y'all, I'm I'm not picking. Yeah, I am. I'm picking on you. Y'all are behind, bad behind on this. Doug, yeah. all the habitat houses now are using tech. Yeah, and they're using say those too. Yeah. Not Bubba, not your. Ah, uh, you don't need that stuff. You know. Yeah, you do. Next one, next one. Here's how you can do your own house too. Existing house, really pretty neat. We didn't pull that out of the box, but this is called Interflex. If you don't look it up on the inter internet, you can just buy, buy this material in little sheets. It has wires in it that's stiff. You push it up between your roof rafters, and it stops all the radiant heat rays from ever coming into your attic. You can order that over the internet? Well, it says you can, but we've tried and tried and tried and can't. It tells you to go to Home Depot. Now, we've called every Home Depot there is, and they don't have a clue what it is. So if you'll call me at the office, if you want to order some, I'll tell you where you can order it, okay? And uh, he can tell you what the price is. Shipping on it is, shipping's expensive nowadays, you know? The shipping costs more than the product does. Doug LP is making the product similar to that too. You know, makes the tech shield, they make the product similar. Good, okay, maybe somebody else will have okay. it too. And where's the factory? 
I don't even know. Go look it up on the internet. E N E R. E N E R Flex. Right there. Interflexfoil.com. And you can read all about it. Well, does a guy bought my sucker a while back and said he just laid on top of my insulation. He said it would just work great. You got that free dinner, didn't you? I got free dinner. Did y'all get a card in the mail ever here this week? I didn't one of those. Did you? Did you buy it? No, when I had to sit there and get open as a, a mold. <laughs> because a lot of customers was calling and my boss had actually gotten. I wasn't in the age category of people, but I went. And my husband went. And I even. I brought a sample back for others to see at work. <laughs> I secured a sample you of can, their product. I can buy that product for you <laughs> in Sevierville, you know where that is, for 35 cents a square foot. Well, I kept asking. I said, well, how much is it a square foot? And they never would give us a price. Because they install it. Yes. Well, it depends. For $2.50 a square foot. But it doesn't depend. If you have a product and you're going to install it, you know, but I figure it depends on whose house you show it at, is what I was thinking. There were some people that bought it. But I, I had a man. I had a man call me. I got a lot of calls on this too. This summer, I had a fella call me, and I said, I could tell why he talked. I said, You've already done it, haven't you? He said, Yes. I said, Why didn't you call me beforehand? Well, I don't know. Did I get took? I said, How much did this two thousand square foot house add it? I said, How much did you pay for it? And I'm expecting him to say thirty five hundred dollars. He said eight thousand oh, wow. bucks. He said, But I also got a solar attic banner fan. That's a hundred dollar item. <laughs> Eight thousand dollars. Now listen to me, folks. That is a rip off, a rip off, a rip off. You got it? You don't put radiant bare on the top of your other insulation because your heat's already your attic's already hot by the time it hits the, the that. If you're gonna do that product, the product's good, okay? You staple it on the bottom of your roof rafters. Now it stops the heat from ever getting in your attic. You follow that? And they go all around the country selling this. Guarantee you're going to save you up to 30% on your on your electric bill. What did I say? Up to. Has it ever saved 30%? Guarantee it had. If it saves 2%, did I meet what I said? Up to. There's another group. These are going to start coming out in the newspaper in the next 30 days. Bob Vila. Plant more trees, plant more trees. <laughs> and your Amish fireplace. Did you get that call too? We refer them to Connie. <laughs> I understand this. These are not Amish people. I love Amish people. These are not Amish people. Besides that, Amish don't even put electricity in houses. So why would they sell you electric fireplace? Well, they don't. These people make fireplace mantles and give you a free heater that goes in. Ready? Every one of these, no matter no matter where they come from, no matter what they are, they're 1,500 watt heaters, and they promise you everything. God, they promise you everything. This sounds good. Full page ads in USA Today. Have you seen these before? Amish mantle and miracle invention help home heat bills hit rock bottom. Doesn't that sound good? Listen to me. Every one of these heaters is 1,500 watts. No matter if they have pretty lights, bad lights, no lights, cat can sleep on it, can't sleep on it, they're all 1,500 watt heaters. They all use the exact same amount of energy. Why are they all 1,500 watt heaters? That's all you can plug in 110 out of without throwing the breaker. You can take your hair dryer, it don't look very good, and do the exact same thing for the same cost. Or some of these, and they're all on sale. This saves you, this will slash it up to up to 50% as seen on TV. Oh, baby. <laughs> and this is on sale if you order today, you ready? This only $499. Has anyone here bought one? I don't want to know. My dad. Your dad bought one. Yeah, I couldn't talk about it. Bob, you remember we went over this in class, and usually there's one person in the class that has bought one. 
So we'll go through the whole thing about 1500 watts times 3.413 BTU. They make about 5,000 BTU. So it's about 5,000 max, no small heater. And then we talk about their $499 and the heater at Lowe's that $69. Yeah. So we'll go through all the calculations. I'll ask what's the difference. Some bright person like Bob back here will say the difference is $499 minus $69. That's right. But the amount of heat is exactly. But mine's purdier than yours. It is. It is. Do you, do you get warmer though? No, but it's is? pretty. So, so you, you got. You're still cold, but you're pretty cold. Now, now let me tell you what I'm telling on the radio and in seminars when I've got a lot of old people there. Okay. We're at a place in our nation's history where there are literally hundreds of thousands of people that cannot afford to heat their whole house. Their husband's passed. They've got this beautiful old big home. They've only fixed income maybe and a little bit of somebody's retirement. They can't afford, they cannot afford to heat this whole house in the winter. They really need to move somewhere, but they're not going to do it, okay, most of them. I tell these people point blank, if you're willing to live in one room of your house in the winter, you can take this heater and you might be able to heat that one room all winter where you can stay in it safely. But all the rest of the house is going to freeze, and your pipe's going to freeze too, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not making fun of it. It doesn't matter to me. It's none of my business if they buy it or don't buy it. I just want them to know it's not going to save them. Well, they'll save them up to 30% if they quit heating the rest of the house. You follow me? It's just an electric heater, period. That's all it is. Whether it's light bulbs or, or a, a, a not hydrogen bulbs, what's those other kind of mentioned a while ago? Halogen. Halogen bulbs, or whether, whatever they are, they're all electric heaters, all of them are. Next slide. Let's skip over windows and move on. This is, this is something new, pretty new to me, that we're having great, marvelous, unbelievable success with for two years. 3M now makes some window, we call it tinny, but it's not, it's called window film. It can go on the inside of your windows, not outside anymore. And you can put that on your east and west windows and stop 100% of the ultraviolet and heat rays from the sun. We're, we've got a lot of rooms that, that overlook the lakes or the mountains or people that call that they have to use drapes or million dollar blinds, all kinds of stuff because they got to keep the sun out in the summertime. This will solve it. This is unbelievable stuff. You, you had another company you tried some on. Now, what was it called? What was it? it was the same product. Same thing. Okay. I mean, this, this is marvelous stuff here, okay? And I'm going to show you. Uh, we're doing a lot of this on big houses and, and commercial buildings and all that kind of stuff. These back up here, these bulldogs are born and raised in this house. We put window film on that on that uh, storm door also in this house and the windows. The lady calls and she says, you ought to come see this. These dogs have slept there their entire life in the daytime where it's warm, 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 warm. And now they just walk around the light spots there, but they can't find the heat. <laughs> she said, she said for, for a month they come in there every morning they're looking for their spot, you know, and there's no, there's no hot spots on the carpet anymore. And she said, you ought to film this and see this, okay? Here's an example of one house we did right here, next one. And that's overlooking the ocean. That one is. We do them on Lake of the Ozarks, done a lot of them down there on that, okay? It takes the glare off of the wind and everything, stops all of the heat right there. You got your view now, and if nobody can see in, you don't ever have to cover these windows or anything. Uh, what's that product called? 3M Window Film. Prestige 50 <laughs> is the one we use the most. Prestige 50. Now, heating and air people are catching on this a little bit because they've got houses out there where sometimes there's two bedrooms on the west end of the house and get hot in the afternoon. And they don't want to go in and redo the duct work and all the stuff. I ask them, how many windows you got on that room? Most of the time, I can put that on those two windows and make solve their problem. It's nice. It's, it's a great product. We're using it more than ever dream we would. Next one. All duck work. John, how bad is duck work? How bad is duck work in Tennessee? The same as Arkansas. The same as Alabama. The same as y'all. 
one out of three houses, the ductwork's totally disconnected at least one spot. He's finding it everywhere, we find it everywhere. Return airs that are sucking hot air out of the attics, it just goes on and on and on and on. Next one, let's move on. Here I told you I'd give you this on generation. Okay, these are just facts. This is not to tell you what we should do, it's just facts, okay? Nuclear is the cheapest way to generate electricity, whether we should or shouldn't or whatever. It's just cheapest. Coal is really about the same, almost as cheap as is, as is nuclear, all right? Gas actually right now is at a 15-year low right now. It actually is only four cents right now, so it's it's just twice the cost to generate the same as it is with coal, but it's a lot cheaper than it was, than it was. Wind is eight cents and solar is 12 cents. Now, I'm not against solar, I'm not against wind. I'm gonna tell you the facts about it and the people in this school that monitor it will tell you the same thing, okay? Now John and I have been looking at that little wind turbine out here for two days and it hadn't turned yet. Okay, maybe something's wrong with it. I've got a million stories on this and I've been to the big wind farms all over America. I know the utilities that own them. I know how much they generate. It's all, it's all not feasible. It's not feasible. Can you generate some? Yes. Okay. But it just they don't. The best wind farm in America only generates electricity 30% of the year. That means 70% of the time during the year the wind isn't blowing enough, even in the best place there is, uh, to do it. Okay. And these. Okay, but that's facts. That's fact. Okay, anytime someone puts up another wind turbine, big wind turbine, your electric cost goes up. Period. No exception to that. That's how it is. Next slide. Uh, these now cost about three million dollars per pole, counting land permits, maintenance is magnificent, big one. There's TV shows now. If you get up like I do at three o'clock in the morning sometime, which I do a lot of my thinking and turn on your TV. Uh, it, I know none of y'all like to watch auction or, uh, or uh, pawn shops. Y'all don't watch that, do you? When I got a lot of rednecks in the room, they all say, oh, I do, I do. I say, have you ever seen, or, have you ever seen Wind Turbine Cowboy? And they all say, no. Well, if you step to three o'clock in the morning sometime, there's entire shows about training people to work on these and how dangerous it is and how hard it is maintenance on these are unbelievable expensive because you if you've ever been to one a man can stand up in that top of that thing and have three feet left over his head that's how big these things are and they don't last very long i mean they wear out they wear out and they don't they don't the wind doesn't blow when it's 100 degrees either see that's another problem all right next slide one of the best things ever happened to me and again i'm not picking on anybody i'm just telling you facts I was the, chosen this year to be the guest speaker of the St. Louis Home Show, big home show. And I did my seminars and my speeches on what was called the green product stage. They hired me to come talk green, 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 green. I got there early to see who all was there, what they had, I always do that. And this man right here has a company that does a really nice wind turbine. You see it? There's nothing wrong with that turbine. It's a nice turbine. He told me for $7,000, he'll put that on a pole on my farm. He thinks I live up there. Okay. I asked, would you charge come put this on my farm? $7,000 to put that on a 45 foot pole. Of course, the wind speed's at 300 feet in the air. You understand? Not 45 feet. It's $9,000 if he puts it on a 75 foot pole because you have to use guide wires then. If you get much higher than that, you have to put a red light on top of it. Right. Okay, this, this is what he's telling me, okay? He's a nice man, too. Nice man. We had a good time together. People were lined up at his booth to, to get this stuff, okay? I knew he wasn't real up on this or he would have never put this sign out there. How much will that wind turbine produce if the wind's blowing? What's it say? It says 1,000 watts. 1,000 watts. What's it cost? Seven thousand. Write it down. Seven thousand dollars. If the wind's blowing, it generate a thousand watts. How much is a thousand watts? How much was the How much was the little heater? Fifteen hundred. So it won't run one of those. How many of y'all got a hair dryer? All of you got a hair dryer? 
Have you ever looked at the number on the side? What's it say? 1100? But it won't quite run that. 50, 50. It run a refrigerator. Uh, a small one. Hit, hit, hit it. <laughs> they have to have two. So I need fourteen thousand dollars to run that hair dryer from Target on sale for eleven ninety nine. With the wind blowing. With the wind blowing. <laughs> if the wind's not blowing, it's don't count. Right, right. You can't dry your hair. Now look at me, y'all. I'm not against wind. I'm just telling you the facts. And the facts are that's why you don't see them anymore, even on no houses anywhere. They used to people buy them and put them up and then they had trouble with meeting them. Nobody will go fix them and they finally after 20 years just tear them down or whatever. Do I think this is ever going to happen or when? I'm going to have to tell you based on technology we know now. No, it ain't going to happen. Never. And John, I can take that $7,000 and put it with her other heating and cooling system and give her geothermal on her house. That works all the time. 24-7, 365. You just can't see it. It's in the ground. Well, I ain't gonna pay for it if it's in the ground. I want to put it where you can see it, right? You know. Okay, all right. These are facts. Now let's go to the next one. Sometimes people get a little upset at me. That's a Doug Rye house. Got it? They called me after they were in their house and said, we're gonna put solar on our roof. I said, why? What's your bills? They tell me the bills. I said, well, it will save you anything. Well, they had a kinfolk that passed away and left them a little over $50,000. And she said to me, we've discussed it and we think it would be a good thing to do for our country and to remember her and da 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 da. I could tell they were going to do it, John, and I did not try to talk them out of it. I just said this to them. If you want to do that, that's your business. That's a terrible investment. Well, we just think it's a good thing to do. $51,000. Hit it. <laughs> if the sun is shining, that's what it'll do. Y'all may not know this, but the sun hardly ever shines at night over here. Am I against solar? I am not. Is it feasible? It's a rare situation. Compared to geothermal, I say there's no situations. Questions? I'll discuss it with you. But this is Let's back up. You're talking about that whole big field? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. That? No. The house? Yes. That's no, like and it. they're selling on this, I expect, John, I don't know because I haven't asked them this. I expect they're selling some of this back to the electric company on this house because this house was geothermal and everything. It didn't need enough energy now to. Okay? Where, where is it? Well, where was the house? Uh, it is in uh, northern Kansas. They're probably selling you know, part of the power back to their electric company and being yeah. paid for that. Yeah. Yeah, they're selling some back. I don't even know their name anymore. They called me and we talked. I, I could find it. I could find it. But my guess is on the good sunny day, they're selling some back to the electric company. They can, what they're not selling, they can use for. Yeah. Yeah. And on their particular house, because it uses such a small amount anyway, their percentage of production on this house would be fairly high when the sun shines. Follow me? This house probably uses, I know for heating and cooling and that, it uses half of what the other houses use, okay? And this is going to produce X amount, but it's still only uh, uh, 2.5 kW. But 2.5 kW on this particular house would be a fairly good percentage of what they need. But what they pay for it? $50,000. What, what would you what would you sell as a power company? What would you sell him 2KW for? 12 cents? 
It's about 10 cents a kilowatt. 10, 10 cents a kilowatt? 20 cents? They'll sell him they'll sell him 2K debt for 20 cents. But if they were to spend that money on geothermal solar panels, how much compared to solar panels, how much cheaper would that be? I'm taking a wild guess, 10 times cheaper. They probably would have gotten more if not the same energy from that. Oh yeah, they this house listen, this house didn't need it anyway. Period. Let's suppose they didn't have geothermal. Let's suppose it was a house, fiberglass house, da 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 da. Okay. Okay. Now it's going to give a, a smaller percentage of the needs of that house. Okay. And then it becomes even even more and more and more not feasible, even more than it was before. There's no way. Let's keep it real simple. On an average house, there's no way I can tell my children or my grandchildren or anybody else. It's okay to spend fifty-one thousand dollars to run two hair dryers. If the sun's shining. If it's not, it won't run any of them. Okay? Next slide. And I know this is not a proper thing to say. And and I tell people all the time, it's like, if I find something in solar space, well, you better believe it, I'm gonna tell you about it. I'll be one of the first to tell you. Uh, storage, like solar yeah, like storage. Batteries. Okay. I don't know. Batteries, and they do. They there are now some batteries that are longer life than they were ten years ago. Some that are quite a bit better. But now I got to put a small room inside the house for you. You still have to maintain it. Here's what bothers me about this. Really, in 15 years, when these no longer work, I don't see the government or anybody coming by and give you ten thousand dollars to help to keep it off your roof and throw it away. Your average geothermal life, y'all, is 24 years. And you only pay for it one time. You put the pipe in the ground, and 24 years from now, when your unit goes out, you don't buy geothermal again. You buy another box and hook it up to your existing loop. So the next time you replace it, it's the same price as a regular heating cooling system then. This is the pipe that goes around, by the way. Okay, guaranteed for 50 years. Maybe Phillips 66. It's almost 100% oil that it's made from. All right, but the loop, the pipe itself is guaranteed for 50 years. We've never lost one in an earthquake. I won't say you couldn't, because I expected someday we would, but we never have. You put the loop in the ground, and it may be there for a million years, really, quite honestly. It's about like a baby diaper when we put it. I mean, <laughs> same material, same material. Except somebody can use it for heating and cooling, for, theoretically, for 100, 200, 300, 500 years or whatever. You just buy this one time. That's why it costs a lot. That's why geothermal costs. But your 20% tax credit is almost exactly what the loop cost on your income tax. So the thing on there is just about what your loop cost, real close to it. Okay. On three-ton system, put this to the ground, drill three holes 200 foot deep. That's what it would be in Tennessee. Drill a hole here, move 10 feet. Drill a hole, move 10 feet, put a hole. Put this pipe in it, put this pipe in it, put this pipe in it, tie them together, run it in the unit in the house, and that's your system. And I can't believe y'all don't have thousands of them around here. Can't believe it. Okay, next one. We already covered this. We've already covered this. I don't know why people kind of keep doing this kind of dumb stuff on the Gulf Coast where they all rust away over five years. And they put fences around them, put them on the roof where it's the hottest place in the whole world. Can't get any air to the units because people might see it. What about coastal places like Florida that, that's, you know, you dig two feet and it's water? Does it still work? I mean, it's a little harder to put the loop in. You ever heard of Mike Huckabee? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Just finished. His wife's named Janet. I just finished her house down there close to Fort Walton Beach, right on the ocean. And when she went down there, well, she said, I'm going to do your thumb and everything, Doug. Will you help me? I said, Janet. It'll be a total war to get it done down there because your builders are going to fight you every step of the way. She got it done. By golly, she's tough dude. Okay, but putting, drilling your holes in sand is not easy, but it can be done. It can be done. Okay, that's the efficiencies of things. I quit talking one more. I quit talking about heat pumps and stuff anymore because I think it's so obsolete. I don't understand why people do it. They're good units, that's not my point. But why would you do this when you have something that's twice as good and get free hot water too? 
next one. Here, so this is the house I finished in uh, Colorado. I figured up the cost of heating that house. There's what it cost, the four different ways they could do it there. Well, I said, do whatever you want to. It's not my business. Then change your size of heating you could, but here's what it's going to cost. And of course, they went to exchange, geothermal. Next one. Electricity must be pretty expensive there. Uh, this was a pretty good size house. But look how close it is to cost of propane. In this well, area, electricity is about half the cost of propane to heat up. This house was really not even on a good grid. I mean, I mean, I mean, this this lot, this lot, this house is on to about two thousand acres. <laughs> far, far from civilization. <laughs> it was. Yeah. That's really geothermal. We don't do that. Okay, we don't do real geothermal, but Iceland does. All the electricity in Iceland, and the little nation of Iceland. Every bit of it comes from the depths of the earth, turns the hot, hot steam from the earth, turns generators, and makes electricity for Iceland. Next one. Geothermal's brand new, really. It just came out October 25th, 1948 in Life Magazine. Now, y'all hadn't heard about it over here yet, but, but uh, it's been around since 1948. And what we do today on the horizontal John, looks so much like this, it's just kind of unbelievable how much they hadn't changed that much except we go vertical as far as now. Okay. And uh, yeah. keep going. Keep going. These are houses I've done when, where I live in my neighborhood. That's my wife's house by the way. Okay. And that house way back up. That house right there back up to a uh, back up right that's an engineer's house there a, a lady engineer and her family. This house has never had a hundred dollar electric bill yet it's three thousand square feet. Had a ninety seven dollar one, never had a hundred on these 110 degree months, okay? Go to ours, our house averages $167 a month electric bill, and our thermostat says it's 74 degrees year round, never change it. And you can see how much glass we got overlooking my fishing spot, my lakes, my boat's parked in the yard, got geothermal right down the side here. Janet Huckabee and Mike Huckabee both came here and brought the architect and builder out here to walk down and show them where the geothermal was. And when they start walking down the side of the yard here, I let them walk a little bit and I say, watch it! They think there's a snake or something. I say, you're walking on my heating and air unit. You know, it's that pipe 200 foot in the ground. You know, all you see is grass. You don't know what's down there. Okay, that's how it is. We can do commercial, John. I don't know if you've ever seen these or not, but okay. We take commercial and build little lakes, or a lot of them have little lakes. We can take, we can do like 80 tons of cooling with that unit right there and some of these lakes around these commercial buildings. We don't have drill holes or anything. We just, we've done the hospital over in East Burlington, Iowa, where it's an 11 acre pond out there on the interstate with a fountain in it. We've got to have 105 miles of this pipe in that, in that lake. We didn't, these, these, we didn't have them back then, we used this. The coils of it, okay? And their, their heating and cooling on that hospital is just unbelievably low. It's just unbelievably low. But there's all kinds of things you can do with Next one. Oh, these are buildings we've done, next one. Uh, the libraries where they had a lake on a POA and all these loops. This is 12 years old. This library and the new library has been on geothermal. Our loops are in this lake right under that deck right there. People always fish around them, catch fish. Don't know why they catch fish, but we know why. We got all this pipe down there and minnows are around it and, and stuff growing on it and everything, and that's why they catch fish there. It's right there by. Works fantastic, has for years. Next one. Uh, that's a tourist thing. This is a World War II submarine, but you will notice. Say it with me together, please. <laughs> now we're going to call the hogs together. It's a who pig suit. Ready? <laughs> who pigs? Okay, just want to be sure you know how to do that. Okay. This we put it. We 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 donated this by the way. We put a couple of those stainless steel that you saw just a moment ago welded it on the bottom of the submarine. Took a three-ton geothermal unit, circulate water through that thing, through that coal. The entire Arkansas River is our heating and cooling system for this submarine. Summer it works great. Winter it works great. We used the existing ductwork was in the submarine from 1943. Of course, if you think about it, ductwork in a submarine better be right. <laughs> you know, yeah, we're thinking how we was going to do our ductwork. We look at it and says, oh, we couldn't design it this good. I mean, you know. 
Works perfect. Works perfect. When you open your mind to this, it's unbelievable for all you can do this. Next one. Next one. Blacksmith knows this. He doesn't. He heats a horseshoe red hot. How does he cool it? You tell me. How much energy does that take? Not much. Well, why don't he wave it up in the air and blow on it like your air conditioner? <gasps> Boy, it'd take him all day to cool it off. You understand that? That's how the high school kids and college kids really begin to catch on to geothermal. It's about how fast the heat can move from there to there. And how much less energy it takes to move it from there to there. When he puts that in water, it happens fast. <laughs> and it's cool off. Next one. Oh, somebody said S-E-E-R. Who said that? Remember that? Seasonal. seasonal. These units are E-E-R, no seasonal. And look, they're not 18. What are they? 30. Every day, every night, not just in the, in the wintertime. COP is heating. These are 500% efficient. 500%. I'll tell you why I don't do more 500 percenters, if you want to know, because they make the coil thinner to make the rating higher, and they don't last as long, so I don't do them. I do the 400 percenters. Next one. Here's a retrofit out in the country of a house where we put in a three-ton geothermal. He, he was on wood heat. Had been for 25 years. We forced him to take the wood heater out after we finished this. He said, I just can't give it up. We said, yes, you can, or our price went up on it, okay? He said, what am I gonna do with all this wood? He had wood out there for the winter and everything. We said, sell it to your neighbors. If that man was here with me today, he's about my age, if he's here tonight, he would say this, if I'd have known this work like that, I'd have done this 30 years ago in this house. For the first time ever, this entire house is warm when it needs to be warm. And they cut no wood anymore. Makes a little bit of a mess drilling the hole. Sand really makes a mess. But it cleans up pretty easily. But when we're drilling, we're using water to shoot all that junk out of the hole, see? So it gets a little messy there. Next one. The equipment looks just like, looks just like anybody else's equipment. The only way you can tell it's geothermal because it has black pipes coming out of it. Next one. Ready? 30% of the entire cost with no limit. That's supposed to go through December 31st, 2016. I don't know if it will or not. I don't know what the next election holds, y'all. I don't have a clue. Anything I think can happen in Washington in the next few years. But it's written right now, the tax credit goes through, through uh, the year 2016. Okay? I know it goes through this year. That's what I tell people. If you need it, why well, get this year? I know it goes through this year. May go through an extra. May go through an extra. I don't know that. Okay, that's all it is. That's all it is. This has been documented as most energy efficient house in Arkansas. Notice there's no solar on it, no wind on it. We've got third, we got HERS Raiders, third party people to come in. I did this with a March of Dimes. This is 2,050 square foot house with 10 foot ceilings on Lake Catherine in uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. It's now three years old. Through two hottest summers there ever was. I have it on a two ton, two ton geothermal system. I drive a Lincoln Navigator out here that has 130,000 miles on it, still traveling in it. My Lincoln Navigator has a two-ton air conditioner in it. It has a one-ton in the front, one-ton in the back. I'm doing this whole house on a two-ton unit that every heating and air company in Ohio Springs says, you can't do that. I said, you can, we are, and you can do it or we'll find somebody else to do it. I'm responsible for it if it doesn't do it. It hasn't missed a lick. I guarantee the heating and cooling cost at $30 a month on this house. And it ain't missed a lick. It ain't missed a lick. Next one, just show it's still a beautiful home. Go ahead, still a beautiful home and everything. Keep going to the end, John. It's rated as the most energy efficient house you can have. Keep going. No solar, no wind questions. Next one, got it? There's my web page. There's my phone number. As I look around up here, I think I've kind of covered everything I need to cover. John showed me a new thing today. If you've got recessed lights in your existing house and they're open to the attic, there's now some nice answers for that. Put all of them in the attic so all that heat and all is not going up to your attic. Okay, kind of like this, put it together.
There's the recess light in here. Put that on here and now push the insulation up against it. It stops of all that air from that from these recess lights that's connected to your attic. Recess lights, can lights, they look like this. The speaker, they're about that big, but they have a lot in them. They leave them a lot of air. Yeah. Okay, ready for questions. Y'all are a good group. We worked hard at this one, didn't we? I got a question for you, Doug. All right. Paige is adding to her house, addition. Small area, has existing HVAC system. We talked about doing something that maybe do a mini split system in that area. What do you think? Any uh, thoughts? Uh, we do mini splits on small jobs a lot because you can't get small geothermal heat. Right. Uh, on, on houses, new houses, where we have a bonus room upstairs, we need to always put a mini split in that because you can get them down in like fourth ton or half ton units. And they're super good, super good. Uh, the system in your house, she has now one handle or the other, I guess. Do we know? Okay, and, and sometimes, you, and sometimes, uh, let me say this in Arkansas, at least 90% of the systems are oversized. And they'll cook, they'll take care if you can get the duct work there right. They can handle more square footage, particularly if you make some other stuff a little more energy efficient. The issue is slab floor, cathedral ceiling. We're not doing you like that work in the attic, don't you, Doug? It don't matter if I love it or not, that's where it is. Yeah, Hottest place in the floor. world. But she's got some of that stuff in her yard out there to keep that heat off. Now, if you get that interflex and put it on the other part of the house, your attic will never get over 105 degrees. What kind of insulation do I need to put in the addition? Like, do I need to do the front board or? Cellulose, low cellulose on top. Probably the cellulose in your case. Since I'm doing, because I was going to do the front board if I did cathedral, but since we're not doing cathedral, I didn't know whether to just do cellulose. Probably the cellulose. Because we got cellulose to the rest of the house. Yeah, probably yes. Yeah. I, I would love, but it'd be very expensive. I'd love to foam your entire house deck. Okay, but you might never get your payback on that, I don't know, without calculating. Yeah. Do your duck work good? Do it right? Say a little fire out of it. Okay. Next question. You're yes, sir. About, it was basically the house again. When you build the house, when you build the house is to make it up, where you don't have to take steps to be in the condition. Is there, is there really any way to do so that you can build a house to make it in the condition, air time, things like that? Is there really no way? Oh, yeah, we do it every day. Back up, John. I think I'm. Is your question, can you really build a house that's super energy efficient? Yeah. No. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'll be looking forward to my invitation to Bob. <laughs> Good luck to you. Thank you. Yeah, the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. the things. Where, you know one of the books? Let's give you a show you one of the books. We're going to give you a book that tells you step by step by step by step right now how you can build your new house, and he can do it for a dollar a day. Super energy efficient, and no solar, no wind on it. That's what I tried to cover here, like how to insulate and, and windows and the things that you do, the, the geothermal and all those things. You can do it, absolutely. We do it every day. Well, and, and it may be back to what you're saying. You're saying, why can't you build it? Totally airtight, totally insulated. And the actual, if you look at certain requirements, there's a thing called ASHRAE 62.2. It's all about indoor air quality. And they say if you build it totally tight, if you build it like this, you would still have to bring in some of the poles, poles in and some fresh air. To bring in some fresh air. So what, what we try to do is seal up all these places that are bad places for air to come in, like attics, like crawl spaces, uh, messing up with duct work to try to bring air in, and bring air in from a really a good fresh air source, not from a from a spot that you wouldn't want to put your head in the crawl space and bring that air. So you're trying to bring air in. You'll never get the house, the box totally time because you, you can't build like this, so many materials go together. And Doug can talk more about that because he's an architect. You could, you could take foam and you could make a house so where tight you couldn't live in. You couldn't even close the doors. My 63 volts away from the wholesale way. You know, you get brother went down and closed the doors on that 63 volts way. You did float. You, you put it down the creek and wash it like we used to in college. Turned around one day and it floated right down the creek. We had to go down and pull it back. It just looked like a boat, you know, because it's so tight. Next question, what you got there? Oh, you I was just going to say, yes, um, folks get ready to leave. We do have a 
small gift for you for coming and giving us your time. It's a weatherization for dummies. And the nice thing is, many of those wonderful tips that Doug was sharing with us about the foam uh, covers for our outlets and the caulking right here in the box to get you started and some weather stripping. So thanks for coming. This is provided you. from the ARC grant from the Appalachian Regional Commission on Energy, uh, Alternative Energy Grant that we were blessed to receive here on our campus. So we want everyone to make sure you grab one of these as you're leaving. That's nice. That's very good. That's very good. How about that? How about and, that? Yeah, if I could, I'd give y'all one of these slides too, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe next time I can. Maybe next time I can. Because they'll be down time I do again. Well, these prices go down really, really fast once they start manufacturing. Good to see you. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Cameraman. Good job there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all knew where to call me, and I do return all calls. I know you find that hard to believe, but I return. After I do my radio show and do the magazine articles, I'm on the phone all day long, even when I'm traveling, pretty much. I do return my call. Thank you and God bless you.